Ladies and gentlemen, it's uh, Wednesday. We got the great Bert Kreischer, who we've been wanting to get on the podcast a long time. The yeah. machine. Yeah, and, and we call I, him the machine, I said dude. to Bert, I've never heard anything. We call him the machine. We call him the machine. Never heard one bad thing about you. In, 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 everybody seems to like you. You're a big, <laughs> jolly, funny man yeah. with a beard. And uh, by the way, pierce both his ears. Oh, yeah, I did okay. that with my daughters. Both. That's my daughters cool. and I, they didn't want someone to go last. And so they wanted to get their ears pierced. We were in London. Yeah. And they were like, Daddy, you just get, you go last. I'm like, I'm going to get my ears pierced. <laughs> and they're like, just go last. And so I went last. <laughs> yeah. And I, oddly enough, I was telling them to be brave and I moved and they mispierced them. And so they're not in like the <laughs> perfect space to be. Oh. So I put hoops in the other day. They look ridiculous. Well, no, because you got, you got tasteful diamond studs in your ears. Did it by hurt? The way. Oh, they hurt Which, so bad. Did it hurt bad? And, and they had, and they over pierced them because I moved. So it went past the part where it was supposed to stop. So it was tight so like the, we're in london we're having dinner at a castle and my ears are red and my wife's like they don't look good and <laughs> they then, don't look good and then i was like remember when we were kids and we got our ears pierced and we were like i'm not fucking cleaning them like just get in the ocean no, you never do yeah. Yeah. i never cleaned them they got infected really bad god damn yeah <laughs> I've yes. never, have you ever pierced ears no i never, never had pierced well, ears no Me have you ever had, you ever had a Hold your on. ears can be never sir do I look like you in a boy band? No, t- wait, hold on. Wait, you're my age. You yeah. definitely went through that period where it was like spring break White and everyone snake. Yeah, everyone was piercing their ears and getting a feather in I it. I considered it I considered it subversive and even communist like. And I was like, I'm an American and I gotta fucking fight for my God forbid the Soviets invade. I, I don't want to die with pierced ears. I want them to see that I was a man. I had a we I had a lot of weird shit going on in my head. I don't see you doing pierced man. ears. Nah. My my you brother me, my I brother did jewelry. it. There was remember there was a time where like I think Eminem had it, like all the white rappers doing it. Yeah. Remember my brother did it and he had literally <laughs> for an hour I came home and he's like, What's up? I'm like you can pierce both the ears and just not draw any attention. He's like, "What's wrong with that way? You cannot do that. You, it looks terrible." He took him right out. That's the only time. Like, have you, that's have you ever, awful. Have you ever had your ear? You ever been had your hair cut and had your ear cut? Uh, Somebody yeah, cut your. I have ear. a my scar. Mom my, my mom, my mom, my mom, my mom. mom cut the top of my ear off. Uh, uh, off. <laughs> what are you gonna say? Scraped your ear? <laughs> off, off, dude. Holy Look shit. at my fucking ears. Off. Oh no. Yeah. Off. Yeah. I've got a scar on the top of one of my ears. It's on one of them. From my mom cutting my ear the top off. And I was like, Oh yeah. she's like, I'm I'm sorry, I was thinking of something else. <laughs> I was I was at the my after my first year of Mad TV, I'm in New York City and I I got recognized by maybe three people. It was such a thrill to me. Like yeah. and by the way, to this day when I get recognized I I still it doesn't get old. I still will give the person way too much time. Like I'm I'm the guy who actually tires the fan it's out. So awkward. He knows. He's it's, seen I go, bro. Will you act like you've been here before? <laughs> yeah. I'm like, well, thanks. And I I keep them there. I'm the worst. I mean, I will give them all the time they want. I'll talk to them about their family. So this this woman, I'm what 27 or something, and and I walk into it to get my haircut, and the woman who's kind of young and kind of attractive, she goes, oh my god, oh my god, I watch you, we watch you all the time, my family and. I love you. I'm it's pool boy or whatever, and I'm like, holy shit! And the whole place is looking over, and I feel like a celebrity. I'm like, this is amazing. Yeah. So I go, give me a haircut. Long story short, she first of all butchers my hair. She cuts it super short on the side <laughs> and leaves the top long. I look like a I fucking a mushroom. I look like a mushroom. I look like a skinny mushroom head. I look like a shithead. Like you know that when they boof your hair all up. I'm like, dickhead. Yeah. Look like yeah. a dickhead. And I'm already, I'm yeah, already dickhead. sensitive that I have. A, I'm already sensitive that I'm long and skinny, and my neck is too long anyway. So I'm like, now I. Got like if you were to bring me down, give me a regular haircut, I'd be five seven if my neck was normal, right? So all my all my height is in my neck and my torso and my fucking hair now. Then she cuts my ear so badly, and I mean so badly, and I'm but, but I'm like so gracious because I'm being put up with it, and dude. It, it it I went oh oh like that. I, I made a weird noise like I, like that, and she this goes oh hurt. I'm sorry. I go I'm fine. It's fine. It starts Blood. to bleed so badly that it's coming down my cheek. My uh, like. Do you have to pay for it? Dude, I of course because I was like it's fine, and I kept going. It's totally fine. It's totally fine. I didn't feel it. I was bleeding so badly. It was so fucking oh. deep. My mom wanted me to go get a tetanus shot. I'm like, I'm not getting a tetanus shot. Where do you, where do you guys get your haircut? Now? As grown men, where do you get your haircut? Wait, 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 wait. Yeah. I had the worst haircut experience ever. Mm. I go, my wife, who we were dating four months, and she dumped me. She was oh, like, no. yeah. She said, 
I think you have a drinking problem. <laughs> and fair point. Me. Fair point. Fair, fair point. point. That's By the way, way me, lady. married that woman, been with her 14 years, still partying hard as fuck. <laughs> that's, a, that's a wake up call. <laughs> still partying hard well, as fuck. Well, it's a wait. Okay, so so I have that in my head. I get my 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 barber. I won't say his name. He's a hairstylist. He used to do Dave Navarro, Ozzy Osbourne. He is the to the stars. Damn. It was hard to get a point with him. He, appointment. He lived in like San Francisco, and he'd fly down once a month. Damn, dude, this guy was great. I I would. He had this whole place, but he would come in, and his haircuts were expensive. Right? What would they, they cost? Like 120 bucks. And why the fuck were you doing that? Because because I was on TV at the time, okay, I, okay. and so and so I met this guy, and I trusted the way he cut my hair. Uh, went through a 12 step program with Dave Navarro. Like <laughs> like he used to party, right? He used to really party. Yeah. Party? So, oh. Yeah, to say the least. Bit. Like he's his got problem. A, he's got a nice body. I, I used to see him change at Crunch. He take a shirt off with his pierced nipple. He's got a beautiful body. Did, did you ever see him? Did you ever see him work out in that hyperbaric chamber that was off to the left? No, but he would kick the bag and do karate. And he talked oh. about his master. He was a, he's <laughs> so a he's bodied guy. up. Yeah, yeah. he yeah. got the dick on him too. Uh, I've seen does. him. In the, I've seen him in the steam room. True, and I I could not stop staring at it. Oh, he it was a, because it's he tattoos a, all around it. It's yes. drawing you into. So he's it. got a dick. Oh, he's got a he's got a fucking. And you know he keeps that fucking bush well manicured. And I wouldn't be surprised if he's got not a stitch of hair on there. Yeah. He went baby. I he like went baby guy. sheer. He's, he's great. Where's eyeliner or whatever? Yeah. yeah. Um, so so I go in. I I realize the day after I've been dumped that I have a haircut, and I call up and I go, I'm gonna have to push it. And they're like, <laughs> he's not coming back for like another month and a half. So I wouldn't push it. So I go, fuck it. I'll go in. This is how cool this guy. They used to have a pool table in there. I walk in. He gives me a big hug. He goes, man, you're looking down. And I go. Uh, my chick dumped me because she says I drink too much. He goes, man, this is my expertise. I mean, I'm really dialed in for this. He goes, come back. We go back to the bar, and he cracks two beers, right? And he says, he goes, he goes, hey, man, I started partying again. I go, really? And he goes, yeah, yeah. So I know what you're going through. He goes, hey, how many people told you you have a drinking problem? I go, her and her best friend, that's it. He goes, that's it. I go, yeah. And he goes, are you sure? I said, yeah. And he goes, okay, here's my rule. If one person tells you I have a tail, fuck them. They're crazy. If two people tell you have a tail, they're teaming up on you. But if three people tell you have a tail, that's when you need to turn around. <laughs> and then, that is the greatest that's great advice. advice I've ever heard. And then he says, you want to smoke some weed? <laughs> this guy's awesome. <laughs> this guy's great. So I go, yeah. And he goes, I can't let anyone in here know that I'm partying like this. I, they know that I had a beer the other night. Let's go to the bathroom. So we go to the bathroom. This was the worst guy to talk to when you're like when you're trying to kind I of reset your life. Getting you over it. I know what an enabler. We go into the bathroom. We get high. He comes out and he's like, "Man, nothing." <laughs> Cheers you up like a great haircut. And I'm looking you up, man. And he pulls out a razor blade and starts cutting my hair with a thumb and a razor blade. What? And he proceeds to give me a mullet and cut my bangs to like, do you remember Tropic Thunder? Yes. The guy that went full retard? Yes. He cuts them up to there. And we're both high and drunk, and I'm going, this doesn't look good. <laughs> terrible, bro. And he cracks two more beers, and I'm like, oh, fuck. I wish you would stay sober for this haircut. Simple Jack. You look like He's Simple Jack. Jack. Yeah. So you I get done God. the haircut, and he's like, I got uh, another guy coming over. I'm going to go meet him back at the bar. Hey, man, I'll see you in a month and a half. And I was like, I'll never go to you again. <laughs> Ever. Thanks for the advice, man. That's nuts. So bad I went back to By the way, roommate. you got a tail. See you later. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you got a tail. I had a mullet. Like, he left this the end hair long, <laughs> and he cut my bangs back to the very top. And it was, like, poofy up top. I went home, and my roommate goes, who fucked up here? <laughs> and I got mad and walked away. I was like, fuck. Dude, you with a, with a, with, that? you're a bad motherfucker when you do it with a razor, though, and a thumb. A razor and a thumb. And or a you're thumb. just high as shit. Or you're just high as shit. I think and you're high as fuck. Yeah, so I'm, just... I'm going to try something on this guy. And just and I don't have hair that you can do that with in the first place. Like, I'm holding on to my hair always. But Would yeah. he have done that to Dave Navarro or fucking Ozzy Osbourne? Probably not. No, but he used to go to Ozzy Osbourne's house and dye, his, and dye Ozzy Osbourne's hair. Like, he had... He was go to their houses and cut their hair. He was the, he was a great guy. I really enjoyed him. But that one haircut. Is that the last time you ever saw him? The last time I ever saw him. Yeah. Dude, find a, a legit like stylist. Oh yeah. I mean, I know, yeah, I know it sounds funny, yeah. but like yeah. to find somebody who actually cut hair is a beast. So into t- tattoos. This, this guy uh, he used to cut my wife's hair and charge a fortune, but he was good. He's like really good. Yeah. And he goes, he, I saw him on set. Uh, I was shooting a TV show. Um, can't remember the show, but anyway. Maybe it was how I met your mother. I can't remember. So uh, he he said to my wife, he said, have your, because uh, I came to pick her up, and he looked at my hair. 
and he said, he said, uh, have your uh, under his breath. You know, I couldn't. Hear you should have your husband come and talk to me. He's not being taken care of. And uh, my wife's like, go see him. I go, nah, I don't give a shit. You know, I'm, I'm nothing's gonna do. So I see him, and he's so great. He's, I go, what would you do to my hair? And he just looked at me. And he goes, magic. <laughs> And I was like, by the way, expensive? I'm already sold. I'm already sold. I'm already sold. They yeah. say magic. Dude, like, fuck it. Magic. And I was like, I'm in. Yeah. yeah it would have cost me 200 bucks. Never went. I never oh, you went. never did it? No, but I you know where he is. the magic? And I kept thinking, I just don't see. I'm sorry. There's not you look, at, look at me. You're honest with me. What are you really going to do with my hair? And by the way, if you do magic, how long is it going to last for me? You know, I just can't. I'm not high maintenance with I, that. You don't. I mean, you seem to be fucking growing hair like a sprout. You, you're not losing Rogaine. any hair. I've been on Rogaine for 25 years. You don't take Propecia, bro? That's no, what I take. No, I already said it fucked up his dick. Oh, fuck that bullshit. I already said it gave him depression, too. I've been taking yeah. it forever. It's fucking great. You take Propecia? Yeah, dude. I got my, I'll show you my dick later. <laughs> I have no problem. You can, have a, you can still have... I'm, I'm I have 50 a, and I can fuck... I can fuck... I uh, fuck... And I'll I'll jack I'll douche and then I'll fuck again. Uh, you know I, I can have, vouch for that. I have yeah. sick uh ama- like I want to have sex. Well, don't say all that. you were time. in the room, but yeah, I've told you. You know stories. what I'm saying? I've, <laughs> yeah. I've heard hey, stories. Man. Yeah, thank I've you. I've seen his dick. Thank you, thank you. Raw. Yeah, yeah. Hard. You've seen my dick. You had you've had that thing in your mouth. What? But you're not. <laughs> but you're. But you're not losing any. Like if you get more face on your beard. you... Yeah, it's I could I could do you do rub the, it on your face? No, 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 it no, no. It doesn't grow there. Everyone always says it looks like I dye my beard. Because my, but my my beard when it's longer, you can't see the the enough gray. But when it's short, you can see gray. I mean, yeah, you're a hairy dude. Yeah. I I'm, do I do I dye my beard. Not not now. But certain times you do. Are right? you serious? I get lazy with it. Yeah. Do you really? Well, no, I haven't dyed it, but I'm I, I'm going to. But for for men losing like the the top of your hair is like the that's probably the biggest kind of fear. It's you like, you have you have your hair makes me angry. <laughs> Oh, your hair makes me angry. Yeah. I thought about your hair today because I, I called my guy, Romy, to, my, this guy I go to now. And I said, I think I'm going to get a haircut before Hawaii. And then I and then I was like, I go, I want to do something different. And I thought, I want to do what Brenda does. Like, you know, real tight and then hair. And You and I will never look like him. Never. He's a different human being. Look at him. Never. He's six foot four. I was looking at his shoulders and because I was looking at this fucking girl. These girls were looking at him. They were looking at his shoulders and he's, you know, he, we were standing in line. He's just so much taller. And he's got those ridiculously broad shoulders that V out. And I was like, what a dick. <gasps> like, I love him. He's like my brother. But I'm like, this is ridiculous. Uh, yeah, they, I watch that, his workout videos he puts up. And I'm like, and I'm like, I, like if you, I ran five miles today in Damn, under 50 minutes. Good for you, brother. But That's had impressive. you seen that online, you would have been like, that was a work. Oh, <laughs> <Yeah, yeah, yeah. laughs> wow. Yeah, yeah. Well, no, you, well, you'd, you'd slow a, down to a six to take a sip of coffee? Like, yeah. holy shit, what's wrong with you? He's a pro athlete. It annoys me, too, because I, I was boxing, and he, I said, when did you like? When did you start actually being on slip punches and stuff? He looks at me and goes, about six months. I, I won golden gloves. What do you want one from me? I go, I, I'm having trouble because I'm not. He goes, hey, 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 hold on. I'm a pro athlete. You want to do this right now? This is going to kill me. I was fighting. You want to do this? Time, yeah. I'm fine. I'm a pro athlete. So what the fuck are you saying to me? Well, I would trade mean? all that to have you guys' creativity. Bert yeah. helped me. I went to Bert. I didn't tell anyone, you know, but the I need help with that, that doing that show, um, This Is Not Happening. Yeah, yeah. So I have a story. And Bert's like, yeah, we're at the comedy store. And Bert's like, I help you. I go to his house. And just the Bert was like, oh, let's just record it. You never know what kind of help you're going to get. You know how it is. You never know. And Bert was like, oh, we'll just record and do this thing. And I so I told my story and he goes, dude, this is I love your story. He's being positive. And he goes, uh, th- I'm gonna repeat your story back. And this is why I think it. And dude, I was like, I walked away. I called my girl. I'm like, Bert's fucking amazing. Like it's your calling. Oh, like you know. And like it was the, some of the you know Brian helps me all the time. And it was like the best fucking. And you know I was wanted to tell you this. It was oh, and I text you. you and didn't respond, but it was like <laughs> lit, didn't respond. At all. I, I, re- I responded. I, you, you didn't respond, but. <laughs> That hurt my feelings. But I was just like, dude, not a lot of people. It's true. Not a lot of people help me. And that help was like, I mean, it helped it's, so it's fucking pro, much. Pro, professional. And it's like, professional. And, and we Thank record you. it and I keep going over and over and just, it's helped me so much. So I've thought about that story uh, probably an unhealthy amount because it is really one of my favorite stories I've heard in a long time. I love a good story. I'm, you know, I, 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 I veered away. I, I started, I, I was talking to a tell about this yesterday. Um, I wanted to be, I didn't know my voice for a long time and I was naturally a storyteller, but I never felt like I never, like the guys that I saw doing story, I kind of, kind of, they did too much of one thing. It wasn't like there was no naturalness to it. And then Rogan's the one that changed my career. I told the machine story on his podcast and he said, you need to tell that every time you're on stage until it's good. 
And I was like, no, it's not a stage story. And he, Rogan was like, no, that's what a good comic does. A good comic works on the fucking material. Yeah, he calls he's, it folding steel, you know? Yeah, yeah he goes, Keep. yeah, he's like, you, it's the best story I've ever heard. And then he said to the fans of the podcast, this is right when his podcast started lifting off. He was like, you guys chant out the machine until he tells it on stage. And that taught me so much about story and about what I like about it and what I like, what I enjoy about it. But your story, I literally, I, I mean, I call it Segura. I go, dude, this is one of my favorite stories I've ever heard because it's a hero. It's a hero's journey. It's the, it is, it's everything you love in wanting to see an arc and then failure, but rising again out of the ashes. So I've talked about it a lot. I was insecure about the story. I don't like to, it's the same thing. You know how you're telling Rogan like it. I don't think it belongs on stage. Yeah. I don't feel like this belongs on stage. Oh, like, I feel no, like, you're fucking I feel, wrong. I feel like people and go, oh, here we go. Shab with this fucking hero story. No, you know? no people I, love it. Yeah. People want to hear also the, the, ins and outs of what you've been through because it's still very, very estranged to us. So those of us who've not fought, those of us who've not been behind the scenes at the UFC, those of us who've not walked that gauntlet, those of us who've not had to face somebody across from the from us, those of us who haven't lost, have, haven't had a fucking giant knock us uh, you know, unconscious or semi-unconscious in the face with their fist, and all that humiliation, all that fear, all that the, the taste of victory, that shit is like what I always tell you, that stuff that people have never gone through. Yeah. We don't understand what that's like. Well, everybody goes through their own thing, but it's very interesting. And it's, it's very it's riveting weird. I try to, to run away from that. But when Bert did it, it kind of it gave me like all this new hope. And I was I still laugh at some of the parts. But I was fucking cracking up, man. I yeah. was dying. Oh, thanks, I was yeah. dying, man. It was great. I called Ari right after immediately and was like, I go, it's my favorite story I've heard in a long time. I said all all it needs all it needs all the only thing I and this is what I, this is my obsessive compulsiveness is I just chew on the ending I keep chewing on the ending because it's Brian Callen and I want and it's no. the, I know the I know the word but I can't find it I've googled it no. online and if that you can paint that the right way <clears throat> it's going to be fantastic but the biggest difference is it's just like Brian said about dodging a punch I was yeah I was good at six months in comedy people were like well you're pretty good at this but I also have been doing it every weekend six times in a weekend. Like for eighteen years, so oh, you're, you're, you're. so I just it's like, but even still, like I have stories now that I go like sitting with Attell yesterday. I was like, David uh, Attell's like a savant, right? I, oh I've never God. met him. Oh Everyone my. tells me how dude, it, I, I, I miss that boat. I'm, I've heard he was savant. I've never seen firsthand his work, but everyone I know says how big of a deal he's on. So I'm like, I've, I've never seen. Last him. night I was talking to him, and he was. We're just hanging out. I hadn't seen him and. Like he'll say stuff like this. I go, um, I go. I, I don't really like Hollywood that much. And he's sitting there smoking. And Dave's probably never done a push up or eating a vegetable. He's just sitting there smoking. He's like there with a the jacket that's too big for him. He's like, mm, you know, right, mm. And I go, I, Holly, I don't like Hollywood. You know, I, I just it's just just a mercenary town. I, I like the West Side. And he goes. Plus, there are no good dojos here, right? There are no, <laughs> you you need good dojos, don't you? Like that. By the way, he did a two man thing with Jeff Ross yesterday, where they were talking back and forth. We were fucking dying. What were you going to say about Attell, Bert? Because I don't oh. know him. I, yeah, oh. You've always spoke high of him. Oh. So I will say this to all your him. listeners who are in, in your boat right now that don't know Attell. Right now, by Skanks for the Memories, <clears throat> it is the most... It is the perfect representation of what stand-up comedy should be. Yeah. It is. It has no fat on it. Everything that's said is, has a purpose, and everything that says has a tag and a joke that he's thought over three or four times. Yeah. I played it for my daughter in the car today, and there's a part where he talks about, if I was a midget, I'd be late everywhere I go. I go, he goes, Adele, we're, we're, we're co- trying to run a chocolate factory here. Where, are you, where were you? He goes, look at these little legs. There was a puddle. I had to swim it. And my daughter was doubled Sorry. over laughing. Dude, he he, told, he's amazing. I mean, he's you're right. And and sk- just think why about hasn't that he, title, what, Skanks for the maybe, Memories, maybe not I've Thanks just, for the Maybe memory. I've just missed it, but why hasn't he worked more? Why isn't he on that same level as like a Jim Carrey or you know? Or because he Kevin wasn't Hart. An, he wasn't yeah. an actor, and 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 he was more of a guy who but stood he, in one place and would kill you with with his jokes. So he's a great writer. Yeah, but as a great writer, great comedian, right? Like there's certain guys like name some guys, you know? Like there, there's certain guys who just killed as straight up comedians, right? Yeah, but the, but I think the ones that I'm always drawn to and I I'm by the way, I, I think I'm definitely in Brian's camp. I don't know how you do it. I I really don't know how you do it because you actually have a blossoming career in acting that's been going on for your entire career. And you've been doing killing it in stand up and in podcasting. I was on. I got I, when I did Travel Channel, it sucked the stand up out of me because you were all in production mode. Attell, Tom Segura, and uh, Bill Burr, Jim Jeffries. I'll throw him in that camp. 
They just focused on stand up. A, a Burr and Segura and Attel, mm. all they care about is doing another special, writing the material. That's Jim right. Norton's still the same way. Jim dabbles in everything else, but like they're just focused on stand up. Tom Segura has never been on television. Yeah. Like, Does he have any desire to? <clears throat> no. He's, I, dude, he's, he's selling out multiple shows um, in theaters a night and then going to the next city and doing multiple shows in a the theater. And I, by the way, I've known him probably 15 years. And to watch that growth is so astounding. And to go, Netflix? Like, no television. No, like, I'll get on television. He had that years. one algorithm. He did that Netflix thing. And it was put in a place where people were watching it, I think, off of Burr. Yeah. But then they realized how funny Tom is. Like, Tom, Tom's on the fu- Tom, Tom is there's fucking. There's a few guys, legit. you're one of them. And I always say, you, I was talking to Justin. Hey, Justin's not your guy, right? No. CA? I love Justin. I was talking to Justin Edward, the other though. night where it's Comedy great. Store. Yes. And I was talking I about Justin. you and uh, Tom. I was like, top 10, man. They're top. Like, there's, there's 10 guys that are just. Fucking monsters right now, and you Dude, and Tom are in that list. Burr, Burr had me laughing as hard as I laughed with, as hard as I laughed to he, tell. He's number one, right? To me, Burr's number one. He, I'm not gonna give away his material, but his new material on what a hero is. I was. I it's I hard to it. make me laugh. Like you know, I see. I'm around. It's not hard to make me laugh. But it was just like new stuff. You're always around the comedy series. I was in the crowd and I was fucking howling. Mm-hmm. I could not. Get enough of it. I'm yeah, like, this is so brilliant. I was there. That this night. is mind me. blowing, man. Me and Neil Brennan were watching, and we we're just like this Neil Brennan's another guy. one. By the way, I got to be honest with you. Third Mike is one of the uh, is one of my favorite specials I've seen. How original is that? I'm Three serious. mics. It's, it's original. Different it's jokes. original. I would say this to Neil. I I would have just. I would have just weaved it all through one mic. I mean, I like the branding of the three mics. I like and the I liked, I liked that he was going to do set-up punches. And I understand the struggle of being a set-up punch guy along with yeah. a story guy, along with a vulnerable guy. But that's one of the things I like about Neil is that is that he is a multifaceted guy who also directs commercials, makes movies, writes for people, goes and just sits on... All right, my wife's calling three times. i got to fucking answer it. Are you okay? Okay. Yeah, yeah, I'm doing a podcast. Tell them I'm sorry. Uh, I'm tell them I'm sorry. Well, wait. Well, what am I supposed to do? Uh, well, there's like a huge crew here. Okay, okay. Me. Tell them I'm. Tell them I'm. Um, tell them I'm coming. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm in. I'm in Venice right now. So I did. Yeah. I'm, but I'm in the middle of a really great podcast. <laughs> Rush hour. Too. Tell them I'm really sorry. Well, wait. So, but should I tell them you're on your way? I mean. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Calendar? Yeah. Yeah, no, I understand that. I get all of that, but I'm not there, and I'm at a podcast. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm really sorry. I'm. Please tell them that I'm. I'm. I'm going to finish up in a little while, and I'll be there. Like two hours. I, there's nothing I can do. Oh, she, oh. she hung up on yes. me. Like she's, I love that like she's working for there. them, though. Who is, like, who is there? Who's at your house? This uh, it's dying laughing. It's uh, or it's a uh, I don't know. It's a TV show. <laughs> yeah, I love that she's well. Like, I'll. Be there yeah, like, what can you I fucking what? say? Unless yeah. you have a teleport fucking machine. I don't know what oh. the... Yeah, but what am I supposed to say to them? I'm not there. They can tell them that. <laughs> yeah. No, but what am I supposed to say? Literally just say, not. he's not here. Yeah. He's in the closet. Let me, so, let me go talk to him. He's they're, hiding. They're just there and they're just waiting. <laughs> yeah, but what, what the fuck? I agree. Yeah. Where do you, and you live in Hollywood? Uh, pff, no. <laughs> I live... I'm, <laughs> I've kind of written them off because there's no way I'm going to make it to them while they're there. There's no way. No, there's no saying, way. Uh, when you said that, I looked at Brian and went, in traffic? It's 3 o'clock? There's, I mean, you've been yeah, in two yeah. hours if you left I didn't. I didn't realize that we pushed this till 2, and so I just, I really had no, there was, I was never going to make that shoot. I didn't, <laughs> just didn't look at my calendar. You texted me, and I was like, this is definitely more important than that. No, I mean, no offense, dying laughing. <laughs> that's, what, that's the kind of shit I would do. Yeah. So, and, yeah. I, and that's the kind of shit I do do all oh, the time. Oh, I'm horrible at that. What? That, They're there? Just yeah. tell them I'm a heroin addict like, and give them me the leeway they give every entertainer. Yeah. Literally yeah. make anything up. Like, they're, I'm not coming. Tell Literally them I'm black. Tell them I'm I'll everyone. be there in 15 minutes. Like, what the <laughs> fuck? I've seen Chappelle just not show up. Like, huh? and then everyone's like, well, he's a genius. <laughs> like, what? How come I can't? I'm, How come yeah, I don't can't I'm a mediocre that? white act, so I got to be there on time? <laughs> What the fuck? Punctuality. What were we talking about before that? Oh, just Segura and all that. And yeah. Burr. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's top 10. But with, yeah, with, oh, who said that? I think Louis C.K. said this to Rogan. Hopefully, I'm not saying anything I shouldn't, but I may, maybe he said it on the podcast, said it at the com- backstage at the comedy store when we were there. But Louis C.K. said, I really think to, to compete these days in comedy and be like the one of the top guys, you can only do stand up. Probably. Like, to yeah. be the most, oh, yeah. you have to focus on it. So, you know, just that. 
Because you Kevin have, Hart goes, well, I don't know. Yeah, I don't either. I don't know. I don't know if I agree with that. But look, I, at the same time, those guys, you're right, that they focus solely on stand-up. And, and they're killing it. Yeah. So the argument would be, but then Bill Burr has his animated series, right? He's not mm-hmm. trying to do TV. He's, he's Louis said, C.K.'s Please make no mistake. Up. Every comic that we all know, everybody wants their own TV show. Oh. Jim Gaffigan, d- 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 everybody I know, is always working and for that. So, yeah. you know. And except for Tom Segura. Tom would he's, jump he's at always, a TV show. I'll he's always him. trying to develop stuff, mm-hmm. I think. Oh, but, but yeah, but it's got a podcast. But the, well, yeah, I see podcasts a little different. But I think, I think entertainment and being a creative and being an artist. I mean, that goes in with TV, movies, stand up. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, it's all one big expression. And I think the main thing is just to be original. And I also think that you can always be writing and coming up with great stuff. I think. I think you know, you 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 got to just kind of realize that. It, it's just about inspiration. It's always work. If you're driving, you should be writing. You yeah, know? that I see. But the, the also, if you're like, let's say you're Dave Chappelle doing the Chappelle show, the chance of you coming out with a solid it's hour tough, while tough. while Tom Segura's solely writing, no, no, coming no. up with an hour, yeah. you're not yeah. gonna be able to compete. No. Well, your you're, brain, you're gonna have you're gonna have spaces, and your biggest sure. thing is gonna be trying to f- switch into that mode, right? Yeah, if you're doing a TV show like that, especially a sketch show. Man, when you're doing a sketch show, it's all consuming. And it's and even like uh, when I was when I was doing uh, Travel Channel, I would be in really amazing scenarios, and I would not have my stand up brain on because you just are like, I just want to, I want to make sure we get out on time. I know that sunsets at six, yeah. Like, and you just are, you're producing too. it, and then, yeah. but then when you're a comic, your brain net like when you're just doing comedy, you can be at a funeral. And just going, Find where, something what's the what's the mm-hmm. what's the angle? I'm experiencing something now that everyone's going to experience at one point. What's my bit? Yeah. Are, you, are you still working for Travel Channel? No, no. I stopped uh, right, like probably in September, and uh, and and I, it was because Rogan and Burr shot me down in the comedy store, and they were like, "Hey, man, Burr was the one that said it first. He's like, you're too good of a comic to be wasting your talent." And Rogan's like, you know, it's it really you need to be doing it, Bert. Like you're not doing it. And and I'm like, yeah, but I'm here every now and then. I do the road every now and then. He's like, that's not doing it. You need to be here every night. You can. You kind need of to be on the road. In, one foot out. Yeah. And say. then they and then the, the one thing because they're both they're both extremely wealthy men. They were like, how much money do you need to get by a year? And I was like, I told them, and they're like, yeah, you can do that on stand up. And I was like, I don't know. And they're like, you can do it on stand up if you focus on stand up. And then with your podcast, if you monetize it, then that'll be probably more than you can make on Travel Channel. I was like, no fucking way. They're right. Dude, I'm they're making right. more on my podcast right now than I was making on Travel Channel. Yep. Considering, I mean, obviously, considering I don't have to pay managers and agents, it just goes to my one podcasting agent and me. You and, own it, Bert. Yeah. And I was like, and, I've, and the second I quit, my numbers jumped exponentially like to the point where i like now i look at big numbers and i go oh, i thought it'd be higher you know like like yeah it it's, really it's has... too competitive like the, the podcast and where especially now like everyone their mom has a podcast so to filter through all that man you it you better look at like a job like there's somebody well i'll put one up today ah maybe i'll do one this week you can't you can't compete you yeah. compete with firing the kid yeah I, i've i've never missed podcast in four years ever you can compete with us well, There's you no guys, way. you guys were the ones that I think the agents were like, "Wait, this is a real job. You could do this as a real job." CA has a whole new branch for podcasts. I explained to my agent when they were trying to get me to take jobs out of town. I had to explain to them the, what what this was, what I was doing on this, not only monetarily but also just kind of like the numbers. And I said, "And you, so, what is your what? Did, what was that Hulu show you were talking about again that you want me to do? Yeah. What was that show that you wanted me to do on TNT that nobody's going to watch? What are you talking about? What, what, how does that make any sense? That's they were the like, key. holy! They didn't That's even get the it. Key. They didn't even know. Is that no one? It doesn't translate. I ultimately want to sell tickets at weekends. I want people to come out and see me do a live stand up. That's what I do the best. Yep. And it doesn't translate. No one was finding me on Travel Channel and then going, that guy screams really loud on a roller coaster. Let's go see it live. No. They, and they were just like, nah. I got something. news for you, brother. You can do a major sitcom on <clears throat> CBS that, that 8 million people watch a week. It ain't, it, I'm it telling won't, you. It won't it translate like a podcast. Nope. It's podcast, if they're, how long is your podcast? Hour and a half? Hour and a half, usually. Yeah, usually, I've heard it a bunch of times. So, yeah. hour, hour and a half. Hour, I always say they're good if they're over an hour and a half. Correct. So, hour and a half. Someone is dedicated to listening to Burt Kreischer talk for an hour and a half. You don't think they're going to be sold on the human being you are yeah. you, you know, when you come into their town? Like, there's no better way like, to sell tickets. Because yeah. they find out you're, you're not playing a character. 
You're a fucking bird. That is what I talked about in therapy today, is <clears throat> that I, I never enjoyed comics who played a character or who were doing a, an act mm-hmm. in the sense mm-hmm. that I'm like, uh, I'm not going to say anything. I can't relate like, to it. Like, I'm the, like, like, we'll just use Bobcat because I think he's changed out of that. But the, when I found yeah. out that Bobcat didn't really stutter, my heart was broken a tad bit. Yeah. And so, like, and but a Bobcat not stuttering and being Bobcat is fucking brilliant. Yep. And now that he's doing that, I love watching him do stand up. That's great. I can't imagine him doing the character. So I cut, I blurred the line very, and I think podcasting did this. I blurred the line from what we said in therapy, the machine, Bert, this party guy that I am. I really am that guy. And then who I am in real life is the same person. And I, and it's, it's like, and then at a certain point you start going like, like, like I'm with Stanhope this weekend and I'm like, yeah, I'm the, I'm definitely the machine. Like we're drinking champagne at six in the morning, getting ready to go to f- find a pool to swim in. That's who you are. Yeah. And I go, I love it. I <clears> love <throat> it. But I was like, it could end up really killing me. Like I need to learn how to dial, find Bert whoever I was in high school and just bring him into my, into this life a little bit to go, Hey buddy. So like, that's why I, yeah. Hey yeah. man, do you remember, do you remember how much fun it was to play baseball? Yeah. Like well, let's yeah. go jog today. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, what, just, what just, your... just these talks like about like what you're going through. Yeah. One, one of the things that, that has, was a sort of an unforeseen ramification of yeah. doing this podcast. Cause I initially started it. I was like, let's do a podcast so I can sell tickets on the road. That, and then all of a sudden you realize that you start developing a fan base that really appreciates what you do. Like I got an email, uh, I think it was on Instagram, a guy who was in Manchester. And, you know, he has a daughter who's who likes Nicki Minaj. Oh, or, I'm yeah. sorry. Uh, Ariana Grande. Ariana Grande. Grande. And he was he was like, dude, he goes, and and I know the people from that area, and I you know that, and I know people that know the people, some of the people that got killed. Manchester's like New York for And us. he was saying, yeah, and he was saying, he was crying. You know, he was just crying because he had a kid and it's all this stuff. And he goes, I, I put your fucking podcast on. Dude, that's and the it, best I forgot everything. All I did was laugh. But you, we hear this shit all the time, bro. We hear it all the time. Like, you guys inspired me. You guys, you know, make me because you talk about you're so honest. All of a sudden, you start to realize, I got a kind of a responsibility. Not to be too lofty about it, but I can't go anywhere. Like, the, it, it yeah. takes on its own life. Like, it's kind of a it's responsibility. The, the, I don't know. The, the fat uh, shaming that Segura and I did was... Probably the biggest thing I've ever done in my career. And we did not, it was no, I don't think either of us had an intention for it to help our careers. At a point, I think we thought we were fucking our careers up. Yeah. But we started fat shaming for those you don't know. Uh, Bert is fat, Tom is fat. And then it was everywhere. And, and then, and then we did, a, we started losing weight. I, I lost 45 pounds. Wow. And then we went on Rogan. We did two days back to back. And it was, uh, I mean, there's so many people that come up to me and they're like, "Hey, man, I lost 70 pounds so far." Yeah. Like, I listened. How did to that. you do it? How did you guys do it? I, I didn't do it very skinny. healthy. I didn't do it very healthy. Uh, so you're, so you're looks he was a be- he was a maniac. About yeah, it. I went like I have. We call it the <clears throat> Mickey Mantle gene. Just that that guy who can go out and party and then get the fuck up, very punitive, and go. I am not allowing myself to get into a bad mood about this. We call that the John Jones gene. right? Is that the John Jones gene? Okay. So you can party. You can just you can kill it, and then you're up. And you're fine? I'm up. A drop-off is seven. Take the girls to school. Get back today. Ran five miles. At the time, I was doing nine miles a day. Uh, jogging, walking. It's impressive. Just very, very hardcore. Going to CrossFit nonstop. And uh, eating under, probably under 1,200 calories, but under 1,000 oh some days. Oh, my God. Yeah. And then um, and all I drank was Tito's and soda. And so, and then I just would be like, I get done the club. I, if I was doing a weekend, I get out done from the club, pour Tito's and soda, get on the treadmill, and just walk six miles at like midnight. While you're drinking vodka. I, I was drinking. I used to drink wine on the treadmill. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, the treadmill has wine splashes all over it. Yeah, because I, I, no, I used to drink. It's It's hilarious. I used to turn on uh, diners, drives, and dives. I turn on anything. So you're just... one of these guys that can drink. Like I, I can't drink, right? So I can I can yeah, have yeah, yeah. one shot of tequila. I'm fucked, right? Or two. Oh. You can you, so so. Can you drink any kind of alcohol and and in large quantities and and kill it? I mean, yeah, 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 yeah. And then my thing is, you can't tell that I'm drunk. Like no one can tell I'm drunk. Wow. And so like, uh, so like, yeah, like this past weekend, we we flew in, flew Thursday on a private jet into Vegas to do the Crapshoot Comedy Festival. I I woke up knowing I was going to party, and I ran five miles like first thing in the morning. Got to the airport by like ten in the morning. Uh, drank on the flight. No show Thursday. Drank there. Woke up with no hours sleep, came in, they gave me an IV and a B12 shot. Felt like a million bucks. Felt like a million bucks, started drinking at radio, uh, did two shows, 
didn't sleep, had an hour and a half sleep, got on another plane, flew into Bisbee, no sleep, did a show with Stan Hope and Bisbee, You're savage, s- fell asleep for like four hours, and then woke up, started drinking with Stan Hope, and then part like it was just it was really out of control this weekend. So when I got home yesterday, I by the way I got up, ran five miles, uh, did a podcast with Atel and Segura, and then did a podcast with Luis J Gomez. Went to sleep immediately because I'm like, oh yeah, I'm wrecked. <laughs> But then got up this morning and felt like a fucking I'm million bucks. I'm not that guy. I That's eight amazing. Hours. I'm, I'm a, a bitch. schedule. Me I too. Good food. I'm a little I'm bitch. I'm sensitive. I just don't. What, you know what my thing? I don't enjoy that. You know, like I, it, I wouldn't enjoy the hustle and doing all that. It feels really good. I don't like to drink. I think my wife is like you. My wife is way more sturdy, and in fact, resents me that I like I was taking a nap today, and she she I could feel her. Her Judge sort of, yeah, I could feel she walked in because I was supposed to be helping her in the garage and I got, I hit a wall and I was like, uh, I'm be right back. And I was pretending to go like I was going to go. So out. I just let her fucking keep working in the garage and I went and passed out. I just would pass out. She, I feel her go. Kent. She goes, hey, oh, God, <laughs> yeah, but well, you're from, you went to Florida state. Yeah. It's kind of requirement to be a party on yeah. Florida state. Yeah, like, Is that in Gainesville? Tallahassee, no, uh, like Florida oh, is in games. Okay. It was Gators. funny the way I I remember uh, there's a comedian Jordan Rubin. You know Jordan? Yeah, sure, funny so guy. Jordan, I go to I moved to New York and we're all at a loft in Soho. Jordan lived in a loft with a bunch of other guys. Really cool. I bring three girls from Florida State. They're all models now in, in New York, and I'm doing stand up. I kind of know Jordan, and I and uh, we have coke, and uh, and I was like. <laughs> And I said to Jordan, I go, hey, we man, have coke. Have coke. And I go, hey, do you mind if we go to your room to get high? And he's like, no, of course. <laughs> and so I walk in with the three girls. Jordan walks, he sees me with beautiful girls. He walks in behind us, and immediately I take his mirror off the wall and put it down. <laughs> and he, fuck it. By the way, I thought everyone partied like this. And he's like, are you guys doing coke? And I was like, because when you say hi, but I, I was like, I would never. Go into your room to smoke marijuana. Like how no, rude! What the fuck? And get it all in your sheets. Like yeah. come on. Yeah. How do you party like an what animal? Kind of animal? Do you yeah. Think I am? And so we all got lines. And Jordan's like, I didn't know you guys were doing coke. Oh my god! <laughs> but that was like the crazy thing about us partying was like psychedelics, ecstasy, coke. Weed was like uh, weed wasn't even partying. Like that was like. To the point where, like, you'd smoke weed to go work out, or you'd smoke weed to go play frisbee golf, or you'd smoke weed to go to class. Yeah. Like, and so, yeah, it was. Uh, Will you still do a, a, a nice, tasty line here and there? No, I got offered it this weekend. Yeah, because are you afraid your heart will stop? Or? A tasty line. Yeah, because uh, that's what I worry about. I call it a tasty line. I've yeah. never really done it. You never oh, done it. No? It's phenomenal. <laughs> I like downers. I don't like uppers. Nah, y- no, y- y- hey, hey, n- you'd people, like yeah. yourself some snow, bro. Yeah, not, a, not there are very few people that are like, this. Eh, it's not my thing. Nah. Devil's dandruff. And by, I, I, would, I would even suggest that you would do all the cocaine. With once this you start, nose, yeah. Once, yeah. Once you started, though, you, I mean, you, a, you, well, because you're a positive guy and you'd just be excited and you'd be like, this is fucking great. It's like, it's like this. Like my buddy did blow and he, and he, he took a shower at my, at my apartment and he comes out and he goes, bro. That's the best shower I've ever fucking had. I don't know what kind of shower that is you got in there, but that's a beautiful Standard shower. shower, sir. I, it's a lot of positives. What, There's a lot of positives on you. The, the, the great, your the great, drug? yeah. The, the great saying no. of cocaine is like, like when you. It's very common for two dudes to do cocaine and start a business together. Oh, like, oh, right? Oh, 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 right? You're like, dude. Let's fucking start a video business. Check it out. Even though they're not, they're obsolete. If we had video, but we gold plate, think about this. We gold plate and we put a prestigious, all of a sudden, you know, dude, we'll call it, we'll call it prestige, gold plated video fucking tapes. You're, so you, you were a Coke guy though, Bert? No, no. I just did it a few times. It's just like did a party. It. it was, you know, can I tell you, even this weekend, I, we found it rude to turn down Coke. Like if if someone offered you coke, it's expensive in L.A. And no, growing up like in Florida, if someone had coke and they offered you coke, that's like going, them going, "Hey man, like don't be disrespectful." Yeah, don't yeah, you want to do a line? You're yeah. like, I'll do a line. I got I got a shift to do, so I'll do like a bump or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah, a bump. Good luck. A bump turns into fucking all the no, cocaine. I used to be really good. I'd I'd do just a couple bumps and be set for the night. Play some darts. Fucking <laughs> really? oh, darts. Dude, darts just on coke <laughs> is. I mean, Not we me. we uh, darts without coke. We had fun. one crazy <laughs> night. It was uh, it was like right after I started in New York. I come back to Orlando. My buddies, I won't say their names, but I'll just uh, I'll, I'll just say their first names: <laughs> uh, John, Brent, and uh, another guy. We're all 
one of them's got a kid. I shouldn't. Uh, I should make up totally. Mike, uh, Jason, and and uh, Derek. Okay. Uh, they one of them good got guys. A, yeah, good guys. One of them's got a kid. We all hang out, and he's like, "Hey, we can go back to my place and do coke." But listen, my I just have this brand new baby, and my wife is not <laughs> like she does not know this about me. So if we do, yeah, yeah, let's just lock it down, and uh, and we'll, we'll yeah. okay. And we're like, cool. keep Double the cool. cocaine away yeah. from the baby. Yeah. He's got a dick load, and so we're like, oh, dude, put on some Steely Dan, put on some some Frank Black, something we can really read into. Because we're about to go Scarface, yeah. And and it's like it's like two in the morning. We're like, this is a great way to end the night. Well, you know what? We'll do this until sunrise. Go or start the, lake. the night, yeah. So we start doing it. There's a knock at our door. All of a sudden, it's our our buddy uh, Jason. No, whatever. And he, but it doesn't look like Jason. He's in an Orkin outfit, and he's got an Orkin truck out front. And he's like, "Hey, I understand you guys got a little blow." And we're like, "Yeah." And he's like, oh, "Well, here's the deal. I don't have any money on me now, but if you can give me a few lines and maybe a little to take with me, I'll just spray your house." We went to college with this guy. We're like, "Oh, sad." We're like, "Hey, hold the stories and just do coke with us." Like, you, come on, we're f- fucking up yeah. our high, man. Come on, yeah. man. I'm like, Jesus, you so, ain't gotta spray anything. Hey, I'll take care of your roaches. Give me a couple bumps, man. I need yeah. some help here. Yeah. But, but we bring him in, and after a few bumps. Spraying a house doesn't sound like a bad idea. We're like, you got more equipment in there? He's like, I do. So we all pack up. We all got working things. We're spraying his house. All of a sudden, the wife comes out. because With the buddy, baby. And she's like, because one of them's like, you got silverfish. And she's like, what the fuck? And we look like we are fucking stormtroopers sitting there with look all like these gear on. Yeah. Look at like Ghostbusters. You got silverfish. <laughs> Meanwhile, you're spraying toxic chemicals all around All over the, the house. All over the house. High as shit. But those, those, like, those nights, I feel like i miss them like i miss them because they were fun but i couldn't do them now because i my biggest problem was the next day the next day i was a i was a real legit mess i was a depressed or with uh, the, dope, the dopamine crash or what like hardcore like to the point yeah. where like i i haven't done it i haven't done it probably in since i was like probably 27 28 i did it on accident the last time i did it i did it on accident because one of my buddies had a bullet where you flip it and then you turn it and you just hit it and they couldn't figure it out. And I was like, you guys are fucking idiots. <laughs> Let me I show go, you. And I did it. I went, I went, you take it, you load it, pack it in, flip it, and then, and I went, oh shit, I just did coke. <laughs> and I had to go on stage at the Boston Comedy Club that oh, night. Ooh. And I was like, oh my God, what do I do? And my other buddy's like, do the other nostril. You can't leave it uneven like that. Because it is annoying. <laughs> Good like, friend. Helpful. Yeah. Good friend. So we it load, is annoying. load it, hit it. And man, I was magic on stage. I bet. Yep. Magic. Yep. And I was like, I mean, fucking. Yeah, 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 yeah. Boston, yeah. just the best time exactly. ever. In New York, Boston, sweating. Yeah, yeah. It was, it was. The Boston great, Comic Club was in New York. Yeah, but that next oh, day, that yeah, weird? yeah, yeah weird? it was on yeah, West Third Street. I don't think it exists it's anymore. Bad. Name yeah, for a club it's called the Boston Comic Club in New York. So weird. Uh, and, and, then, and then, but then the next day, I was laying. I lived on uh, right across the street from the cellar, and I'd had Chinese food. And someone said, "Is there MSG in this Chinese food?" And I was like, "Oh my god, I'm gonna." And I thought I was having a heart attack. I thought I was dying. And I was like, I was like, this isn't. I was like, this is that was a mistake last night, and that's the last time I'll do it, and I haven't done it since. Damn. Yeah, I, I just it it was a lot of fun, but that next day, man, I'm not that guy. I can't. H- have you ever smoked or eaten a hash brownie, or, or had you ever had too much THC? See, were you panicked? Like weed? Ooh, that's yeah. the worst. Yeah. Yeah, it's the worst, bro. The worst, dude. Uh, I had to have Artie Lang talk me down. I, I called him up. I was like, Would you I have the I'm brownie? Dying. Edibles. The brownie. Edibles are the. I ate a brownie. I that called him up in the middle too. of the night. I go, dude, I think I'm dying. He goes, you're not going to die. I go, I can't, I can't feel myself breathing or I can't hear my heart. He goes, all right, relax. Because oh. you know that L.A. Speedwagon guy? I, you know, shout out to Speedweed. Yeah. Dude's great. But he's like, yeah, they always give me extra stuff, you know, because I use weed to sleep at night. And he gave me this chocolate bar. And he's like, get easy with this stuff, man. It's super powerful. I ate like one, like fucking half of a square. And I was like, oh, my God. I don't like edibles. It gives me a hangover the next day, like kind of groggy. Yeah. My girl's mom. So half half a bar got you really high. Not, no, not even half. A quarter of a bar. A quarter of a bar. Quarter got of you this that tiny up. little square of this Jeez, thing. So dude. big bar. Check this out. My I go out of town. We're doing work, something like that. My girl's mom stays with us. She's having anxiety. Can't sleep. My girl goes. Brendan uses oh weed. Oh my god. You should. And she goes. Well, I'm not going to smoke. He goes. No. He has chocolate. You can just eat this chocolate. She gives her half of the whole bar. No, dude. No. It was like a fucking. Stop it. Elephant tranquilizer. Come on, dude. She was like <laughs> foaming out of the mouth. The, her fucking. She was like an elephant tranquilizer. Her fucking dad came over. Was like, "What in the fuck did you give my wife?" 
Can you, you can you die that way? You can't die that way. Right? Uh, no, no, but I definitely I definitely die. thought I was gonna I definitely you thought can't. I was gonna die. Before. No, no, you cannot OD on marijuana. Okay, there's you can you, you there's no one's ever done it. So 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 but she, was she was high just... for seven months. She was just she was so sick. Uh, my manager's calling. You're in hey, trouble. can you fix this, Reg? Sorry, I fucked up. It's okay. So they're there right now. Are you able to get back home anytime this afternoon? Yeah, I can be there this afternoon. All right. What but time do you I'm, think I'm in going? Venice, so it's going to be a while. Six. Are you leaving now? Or are you just going to be there for What's, a How long are we going to go on this? Probably another hour. Probably, I'm going to go another hour, so I can be there an hour and 30 minutes. Uh, probably two, considering traffic. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Just fix it. Because uh, this, really, this podcast is really good. <laughs> Like, I listen okay. to podcasts. 7 o'clock is a uh, glare and jam and reminder. Okay, great, great, great. All right, I got to go. I love you. Bye. Um, yeah, I, had, I took marijuana, and I've been talking about this on stage, trying to figure it out, because I don't want to sound hacky, because I know there's guys that have done it, but I've had times where your brain starts having independent conversations with itself, and he's like... Oh, when you're so high? Yeah, he's like, hey, man, yeah. uh, do, I have a question. Do I remind you to breathe? And you're like, oh, fuck. Yes. And then, and then do you, I remind you to breathe? And then you're like, wait, I'm not breathing? And he's like, well, we haven't been breathing in a while. Like and then you start going. That's the worst when you start going, and you know your heart's racing. Yes. And I've had that a number of times, and and that's why I don't really eat marijuana. I'll smoke it, but I smoke it in really small. I don't do vapors, very real, real small. Yeah, yeah. Like edibles, I don't. Edibles are trouble, man. Like Joey with those Death Stars, dude. Dude, dude what's wrong with you, man? Joey slipped my dad marijuana. Have you heard this story? Yes, you told. No. Yeah, Joey comes to Easter one year, and he's got fucking edible popcorn, and he goes, "Yo, Mister K." You want to see the devil's dick tonight? And my dad's like, "What's that, Joey?" Oh, it's so aggressive, Joey. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like at Easter, at Easter, devil's see the dick. Devil's dick tonight. No, no, I don't. <laughs> and my dad just takes a handful of popcorn. Did he know what it was? I had no idea. There's a picture. I don't know where. You can find it if you look online. It's on my Facebook, my personal one. There's a picture of Joey giving the popcorn to my dad. It's four pictures. My dad eating it. They're all connected like a like like you're in a yeah. booth. My sister's going, "What the fuck?" And then me laughing hysterically. And then I was forced to eat marijuana with my dad. So my dad's like, buddy, what do I do? And I was like, You're, I'll go in with you. And so I ate it. And I don't like eating marijuana. But we had the greatest fucking night of our really? lives. It didn't get weird? My, we're sitting out. It's like probably 7 o'clock. It's, we're still very high. Having a cigar. Having a whiskey. And I say to my dad, my, I said to my dad, why don't, why don't you like me? Because I'm high. I'm comfortable. And he goes, uh, I don't know. I, I was wondering about that. <laughs> well, hold on. This is greatest. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. I got That's a good question, Bert. I've been a... thinking a lot about that lately. Not, not... I can't figure out what it's your fucking face. <laughs> what if you just like, like your whole life? It's that fucking I smirk. Don't like that face here, the shape of your face. Was was your dad a seasoned tripper though? Does he does he nope. smoke weed? No, oh, no, 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 no. Yeah. Not, not at all. My okay, okay, is... this is great. Okay, so keep going. I'm sorry. All right. So so I he goes, uh, I've been thinking about that a lot. My dad didn't even go to therapy. But now he's high and he's like, he's humbled. And he goes, uh, you remind me of my dad. And I said, okay. Wow. And he lost his dad when he was 13. And it, it really fucked him up. It really fucked him up forever. Like, fucked up anybody. He, like he'll, he'll be walking through Gelson's and see like a, a, something that his dad used to like to put on his sandwiches and just start crying. And, uh, and he goes, you remind me of my dad and I, I'm afraid to get close to you because I, I look at your lifestyle and I think you're just going to die. And I said, okay. I go, I'm not going to die. He How goes, old are you at this time? I am probably right around 40, 42. Okay, not young. All and right, so I go, how can we fix this? He goes, I don't know. I said, well, like. What how- an honest guy, though. What an honest guy. Not Thanks o- to always. the weed. Thanks to the yeah, marijuana. He never said it. It's 42 uh, years ago. Bye. Uh, yeah. Just get high as shit. <laughs> 40- Dad, won't you like me? <laughs> I've been thinking about that, yeah. man. <laughs> yeah, he's like, obviously, I love you. I just, you make me uncomfortable. Have you always had a weird relationship you with your father? Uh, yes. Unaware of it. Unaware of it until my parents got divorced. At what um, age? Uh, 22, 21. Kind of older. Yeah. And, uh, unaware of it that we didn't have like, like just, he just didn't know how to, like, sometimes you call him and say, I love you. And I'll go, okay. He doesn't know how, he doesn't know how that's to. That's his generation. Yeah. That's his generation. And so then I say to my dad, I go, uh, I go think, how can we fix this? And he goes, I just, I want, I need, I need you to do a lot of things you're not willing to do. I said, like what? And he goes, I need you to get a cardiologist. I need to get he, – and he starts listing off all these things that he – wants he, to see that you're not going to die. He wants to yeah. prove that I'm not going to die. I go, listen, I don't care. I go, if you want to – you be in charge of that. And he goes – he literally lit up. He's like, I can get you a cardiologist. I go, you do all of it. Get get your cardiologist, all your medical guys. You get them online. You pick them for me, and I'll go, and we'll – and that – and he's like, he's like, you do that for me? 
I was like, yeah, I love you. Like, I don't want, I want you to like me. Like, I want you to be able to have dinner with my family and not be over judged, judging me, yeah. everything I do. Cause if I would go to eat something more, he'd lose his mind. If I had another drink, he'd lose his mind and he would be very passive aggressive. His about dad it. passed away from what? Stroke. And his, and his dad, he's like, my dad was the life of the party. You seem to be the life of the party. Those are the guys that die fast. I just, and my dad's never liked that's big, deep loud. emotion for him, man. Yeah. That, I mean, I, I get that. Years? That's fascinating to me. His dad died at like 40. Yeah. His Have you died. had a cardiology exam? That was the You're biggest. You're fucking right he has. The biggest problem is I went to the cardiologist. He goes, you're perfect. I did a <laughs> CT scan. He goes, zero blockage. And I started eating like a fucking pig. And that's how I got to be 265 pounds is that I literally. Because they gave you the green light. They gave me the green light. Put me on all the medicine. And I was like, so I can't die from this? Because I was, I was nah. judging it. I was eating healthier because of. I didn't know if I was healthy or not. Once I said I was fine, I was like, I'm, I can party. Now, are, since doing that, are you and your dad closer now? Is it all good or it's kind of still? It's gotten it's gotten a lot better. It's gotten a lot better. He called the other day, uh, like, very, like, he was like, I'm, I'm just so proud of you. I, I just, I can't even tell you. You're such a good son. I, that was the other thing. He thinks I piss away money. So I had my financial manager and my and my business manager, my financial planner and my business manager, send all the documents to him. And to be like, yo. Like, hey, Bert's going to be fine. Yeah. Like, what did your dad do? Lawyer. What kind? Uh, he, real estate, really. He's a lawyer, but he changed the, the, the flow of what lawyers were doing in the real estate business in Florida. And, but, and so was very successful, but not until after I graduated college. He stays in shape? No. Mm. No. My dad's the kind of guy, like, I, I've said this before, but, uh, he got hooked on speed without knowing it was speed because mm-hmm. he had a doctor mm-hmm. going, if you take this, it's whatever the pro hip, whatever the pro fen fen was, whatever fen fen was. It stops your was, appetite. It stops your appetite. Yeah. And I remember one Easter, I came back, I was buzzed, and it was early in the morning, and I came home, and I was like, I'm tired. I don't know if I can make this party. The girls were little, so Easter was a really big deal. My dad's like, buddy, take one of my pills. You'll really wake up. And I was like, okay. And I took one, and I was like, dad, you're eating speed. I was like, I was like, yeah. Let's over talk to everyone now at the party. You've yeah. been taking these. He goes, I right. take two a day. I'm like, he goes, uh, that's amazing. The focus I have, I could just sit there and work all day long. Yeah. I go, do you get panic at night? And he goes, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I get panic at night. I'm like, yeah, you take a fucking speed. I go, do you ever find yourself folding laundry? He goes, all the time. <laughs> On Sunday, I can't stop folding fucking laundry, organizing my garage. I go, yeah, because you're a fucking pill speedhead. Yeah, and then you're an and, addict. Man, yeah, and, drugs and, are so interesting, man. Like, oh. I feel like so many people are doing at least one drug in this country, at least. I mean, think about it, right? Whether it's Prozac, some kind of a. Uh, well, it depends what you just de- determine a drug. Is aspirin a drug? Is ibuprofen no, a drug? No, no, I'm not talking about, about those drugs. I'm talking about, uh, like sort of, a- I'm talking about sort of mind altering drugs. So, whether it's antidepressants, uh, uh, reuptake inhibitors, um, uh, you know, whatever the Xanax. word is. Xanax. Xanax. Or, or, or depression, then, or, anxiety. Or then there's weed. Weed is also considered like you know your a type of mind altering drug. I mean, but I mean if you think about how many people are actually doing at least something, a pills, pills. Dude, that's the that's thing. the shit. There, I, I did a backyard slingshot in uh, in Utah. Two telephone poles, hundred feet in the air, bungees over them. They pull them down, harness you in, put you on the back of an ATV, and it takes off. And when you can't hold on anymore, you shoot eighty miles per hour into a canyon, back and forth. Right, and so I'm about it. to do it. The guy says to me, "How much do you weigh?" I go two twenty five at the time, and he goes, "Ooh, that could be sketchy." I was like, "What?" And he's like, "You may hit the ground. Worst case scenario, you break your back." And oh I go, my god! No. So one of the Mormon moms that was a Mormon compound. She said, can I get you anything? And I was like, I would love a cocktail. She's like, yeah, we're Mormon. We don't really do that. And then she comes out with cooking sherry. And I was like, I'm not that bad. <laughs> yeah, cooking cooking relax. Sherry. But then we get done, and one of the dads says to me, dude, I, you should have just taken a Xanax. Mm-hmm. I said, I don't have any Xanax. And he goes, oh, we take them like candy out here. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Because well, it's not because the church that- overlooked Xanax. And... And and mood pills. Crock shit. By the way, if you're Mormon and you're upset at what I'm saying because it's inaccurate, then I'm wrong. But that's what your this, experience these, with these. Mormons, my experience was yes. yeah. they were taking. They were cool with taking pills. No weed. No acid. They, no it's coke. Very, it's the very same common. way they 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 won't let you have sex but let you do anal. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Those Mormons, man. That's true though. I, that's true. Is that right? You, the, so the ones I know. Again, not every Mormon's down for the backdoor action. Yeah. The ones I knew in Boulder, Colorado. Yeah. Yeah. would be like, no, well, I don't have sex. You fuck me in the ass. I'm like, 
I can fuck me God, that, I feel like that's so much darker. Like, yeah. Cheating. I, all right. I mean, I guess I'd rather do that. Actually. Well, there, there's a, there's common knowledge that in a lot of cultures where virginity is very much esteemed. There was a girl, girl in college. Girl, girl, that was girl, that girl, like, listen, you can bang my. I I've known. You know much more. I've met girls like this. Intense yeah. ass plays yeah, than you can, actual. You can yeah. bang my ass, but not not my. I'm saving my cooter for for my husband. Like, all right. How crazy is that? I yeah. said, I That's said, the same <laughs> as alcohol to fucking pills. All right, I, yeah. pick your poison. I know. I'll throw it in the ass. No but problem. Even even indigenous cultures, like even like uh, throughout history. Uh, they've always <laughs> looked for things that were mind altering. Whether it was, I think human beings have this need to kind of experiment with their brain. I like love they it. like to I get love out it of when their... it works. Yeah. Like, do you remember the first time you had coffee and you were like, "I feel like a million fucking bucks." Yeah. I was working at a law firm and I walked uh, six miles home. I was like, "Fuck it, I'm gonna walk home." Yep. And I, walked, this. I was like, "I feel fucking amazing." Can you imagine if you get that feeling again? I drink so much coffee; it's it it's tough, nothing. man. Yeah. Well, it, it definitely does a little now, but. You know, I'll have serious withdrawals if I don't have coffee, yeah. like crazy drug withdrawals. Yeah, I, I, I wish at that time I was I just worked at a law firm and I was my own. My dad got me the job. My only thing that they didn't need me, but they knew my dad and they respected my dad. And so they're like, uh, one guy goes, just make coffee. And I was like, well, and he goes, just every time I come into the pot, better be full. Okay, how about that? I like that guy. And so I was like, okay, guy had a breathing apparatus, and he used to come in on his fucking thing. Goes, they're fucking. It better be fresh. I was like, it's fresh. And then one time I said to someone, I go, what do I do with these half full pots of coffee? And the girl goes, I think you should just drink them. And I was like, okay. So I would line up six cups of coffee to make sure it was always a full cup. Goof, goof, I'm fucking goof. shaking. The yeah. first day I'm shaking and I'm like, I feel fucking amazing. <laughs> like I'm having conversations with everyone. And then, but I've had too much coffee where you get sick. Me too. Yeah. I, I, I would say I do that probably once every two weeks. Oh, yeah, if I'm real busy, I'm getting. I did get, not expect that. Oh yeah, every every two weeks, I'm. I'll be like, oh god, I've had too much. Like, you, my, you'll drink it gets a lot weird. of coffee. I man. just, I love coffee. I like love the flavor. Iced tea. Too. I love having a, a yeah, iced tea. I, I have drinks. Like one thing about me and my brother, we always need. Like I always need drinks. Like you notice, I always have a drink. In my yeah. car, there's always drinks, always drinks. And then if I, it's a busy day, I'm like, I need a coffee. I'll get a coffee. Then something, I'll get a coffee. And I'm getting these big cups, and I'm like, holy, I got, I'm like. I've had 14 shots of espresso today. Like, I don't yeah. feel good. I don't feel good at all. 14 I have a shots. Yeah. It's a lot. Yeah. 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 I can't. I can't. I, I, I used to take, minutes. I used to take ripped fuel. Do you remember that? That mm-hmm. stuff's dangerous. Dude, I used to take nine a day. God damn. In the morning damn. With, with a cup of coffee. Wait, you're Bruh. an extremist, huh? Oh, dude. This nine is a, a day? When I Bruh. first Mickey moved Mantle. to New York, yeah. Mickey Mantle yeah. of company. It's, yeah, it said, it, it said on the back, take... Uh, three in the morning, three at the afternoon, three at night, and then in my head I'm like, so we're greenlit for nine. So greenlit. So I would, I would, and I worked at Barnes and Noble, and I'd pop nine and have a coffee. Yeah, you need the energy at Barnes and Noble. Nine fucking. Like, <laughs> you need to be that, raging yeah. at Barnes and Noble. What would that do to you? Oh, you're a fucking tweaker, dude. <laughs> so wait, I've told this story before, but I'll tell it very quickly. I, you just start thinking crazy, but then you're like, you're like, I feel good. Like, I need to fucking work out. So I'd go down to the basement, take the freight elevator down, go down so no one could walk into me, and I'd fucking work out like a lunatic. <laughs> Get my underwear, push-ups, fucking squats, forearm raises with the Bible. I mean, I just fucking get Bible. weird. And I'm just, every day, I'm like, I'm like I'm, I'm getting paid. I'm, I'm eating healthy. I was eating tuna with a can of uh, f- fresh vegetables. That's Jesus. what I'd have. And I was like, I'm losing weight. This is what I. This is my thing. I'll read books. I'll get smart. I'll get in shape. This is what Hollywood's looking for. It's pretty legit. And then uh, my I'm boss bad. was like, after like a week or two weeks doing that, he's like, Hey man, you know we have cameras everywhere. <laughs> and so they had been watching me work out in the basement in my underwear, and then come back to work, and they're like, This guy's a fucking lunatic. <laughs> Boy, he's awesome. <laughs> In your underwear, in my underwear, down yeah. and work it out. Because it was in the Astor Place, Barnes and Noble didn't have air conditioning, <laughs> and so I, I would come up the first couple times. Sweaty, I'm, I'm coming up soaking because you'd come up and you'd be like, "Holy fuck!" And so I was like, "I gotta." So now I'm having times where I'm drying off, like walking in circles, drying off. And so yeah, I was. Uh, but that was that rip fuel, and I, yeah. I got to be honest with you, I was really kind of addicted to it um, because I. I it's really hard coming off of that because you're like, so what, I'll just fucking sit here and do nothing all day? Yeah, so well, your adrenal glands, too, they're so saturated when you right. take that, they, it never comes back. You see, I, I think like a 14 <laughs> or 16-year-old kid died from too much caffeine. He yep. drank like a Mountain Dew, energy drinks, like four cups of coffee and died. Yeah. Yeah. I haven't had an energy drink. That might be drink. just a weak heart, though, too. That's know? what I think. Just chalk yeah. that up as the maybe yeah. it's not for you. I haven't had an energy drink in 
uh, eight years. Dude, I haven't either. I don't. I don't fuck with them. They're such garbage. And then we were in uh, oh, Oklahoma, and the coffee was sorry, Oklahoma, but the coffee they had in the green room was so bad. I was like, and I was going on stage with coffee. It's kind of my my safe zone. You know? And yeah. like, fuck, man, there's no coffee. I'm like, I need energy. And then I look at Brian like, I might drink one of those Red Bulls. I haven't had one forever. Who knows what's gonna do? I just guzzle it. I'm like, that's not very smart. Show went great, but then we get done. I'm laying in bed. I'm like, why? I can always sleep. My heart's going. <laughs> I'm just, just through the night, eyes wide, fucking. Just open. couldn't just sleep. You told me that. You go, I didn't sleep well at all. <laughs> oh. got, got to bed about six a.m. Just a hummingbird, just <laughs> texting anyone who will answer back. What's up, bro? Not much, man. <laughs> 4 a.m. That late night lonely texting shit, man. I even text you. Oh, dude, yep. Hey, how about that dinner, y'all? Hey, man, it's what about? I'm like, I don't know. What are you doing? Y'all, I'm next door. I'm like, I know. Doing what? Though? He and I, he and I will fucking, do that, that's what you know. Like, if one of us doesn't have anything to do, we'll just be like, like, we'll eat. Like, we'll do a whole podcast. Yeah. Then we'll go hours. eat. Now we've been together for four fucking hours, right? Yeah. I got to go home. He'll sometimes, he'll be like, I don't know anything to do. So he'll be like, what are you doing? I go. Not much, man. I gotta go. He goes, yeah. And he'll follow me to my car. I go, dude. <laughs> next thing I know, he'll sit in my car. And I'm not getting him out holy because he's too big. Yeah. So I doing? push him, and he goes, ah, come on, man. I'm gonna stay in his car. <laughs> and I'm like, dude, I can't get this fuck. There's not. I'm not gonna get him out of my car. I gotta hang out with him. Yeah, chill, man. He Try goes, let's chill, chill and hang out. I go, I really have to go. He goes, nah. <laughs> he'll hang a little while longer. I'm, I'm so done. glad to know that people have that late night where you can't sleep oh. and you're. Like well, and you're going like you're going. I got friends in London, right? Well, they got to be awake so right what, now. What is it there? Eight, nine? Yeah, yeah. yeah. yep. That's. I what sent I an email. I'm going to Australia. Ooh. I sent an email to the Australian guy thinking they're up. Didn't get back to me. <laughs> like, hey, I'll just run through a few <laughs> things, just searching for anyone to respond back. That's right. Yeah, hey, what's the, what is the stock market in Tokyo doing right now? DMing just random fans. Hey, just saw this. How's your <laughs> night going? Oh, what the fuck, man, dude? I gotta piss so bad. We gotta stop. Go I have to piss so bad. Let's go piss. All right. Let's do some uh, current events with the machine up in here. Who keeps pushing current everything back? Current events with the machine. I have to. I have a, uh, by the way, I have, a writing, I have a meeting with my two writers for my TV show tonight at seven. <laughs> like just, yeah. Well, I, I, I don't look at things, so I don't. I never think I'm, to go. I'm kind of bad too. Yeah. You're, you're, you don't have a manager helping me out, or I do, but it's just like like I wouldn't. I would scandal. never make you go through my manager. Yeah. Yeah, you know? and no, so you're yeah. like, yeah, let's do two. I go, yeah, yeah I got two. Yeah, no, true. Um, that's yeah. how I am. In my head, I was like, nice, I get to work out. Cool. <laughs> my wife's like, get an assistant. I'm like, I'm just too expensive. All right, go ahead. All right, first current event, the TJ Dillashaw, Cody Garbrandt fight is absolutely 100% off now. So you all remember. Yeah, yeah he's, he's back. back. So you all remember, and Robert Whitaker will be fighting co-main event and for the interim title. It's hilarious. It's the in their place. Event. Look at Yo Romero's body for a second. That is just, ridiculous. Just, like, like it's so. I silly. love that fight for Robert Whitaker. Really? Yep. I think he beats him. Really? Yeah, I think he knocks him out. Por qué? Because his hands. Yeah, I just think he's younger. I'm, I've never, you know, I think the the Yo Romero Weidman fight. You know, Weidman's obviously, you know, not the same guy he is. He's still a phenomenal fighter, and he was doing well in that fight. I just. Um, I don't know. I like Whitaker in that fight. I think his hands are quicker. I think he hits harder. His anti wrestling's fucking good. Yoel Romero doesn't use wrestling that much. Mm. He, you know, he's more of a striker these days. He's athletic. I think Whitaker has better striking. I just feel like it's Whitaker's time, man. I didn't think Yoel beat uh, Jacare. Mm. But uh, the, the main events: uh, Amanda Nunes. Yeah, Chef Shevchenko against Nunes. Oh, that's think, gonna I, be fun. I think Shevchenko beats her in five really? rounds. I thought I thought the the last fight they only fought three. Shevchenko came on as of late. If that was a five rounder, she would have beat her. She's like a seventeen time world championship striker. high striker. Yeah, I, I think uh, Nunes loses that fight. I, so I bet sturdy. I picked the two underdogs. I would assume. Hmm. We'll see. That's gonna be really good. What else you got, Jen? All right, the next one is Live Nation. They're the ones that do all the concerts. Um, they're gonna offer refunds for all the concerts that are going on in England that are coming up. Which are because no one's Katy going. Perry, Iron Maiden, Kiss, Walk a Flock. Wait, hold on, they're blocking. They're canceling all the. All, yeah, because they think refunds. that another. They think that another attack is imminent and it has been planned on a high level. So you know, uh, I guess this is what I heard on the BBC, and I don't know, but 
Mm-hmm. A lot of these guys that were trained in Syria, in the in you know in the war, and understand have a knowledge of explosives and stuff. I guess some of them are in in Europe, and that's the worry. Oh my God! So, so what well, you're well, saying this, is this guy, this guy's family were refugees from Libya. Libya yeah, yeah, and then uh, under the Gustafi, right? No, Qaddafi, uh, uh, Qaddafi regime. Yeah. So they fled to England, Manchester. He's one of four, something like that. And then somewhere he went, obviously fucking batshit yeah. crazy. What That's well, I, I wish they'd also tell me what what how much. Katy Perry gets of the door. Oh, I would love to know that. That's where they make all she, their money. She, and yeah, touring. they make crazy money. Uh, yeah. Touring and then uh, also mer- merchandise. Yeah. Merch is yeah. Bieber makes oh, and Kanye make most of the money off merch. That would be crazy. I because I like I, I, I those big bands. I like. I wonder what Phil Collins gets for a show. I know. I like to think about that sometimes. I think too. about that all the time. So I, that's one of my favorite. Well, the thing Eagles with- had made. Um, I think, like I was talking to one of their their, their manager. Because uh, he was on set when I, this is a long time ago on Mad TV, but this is way past when the Eagles were the Eagles, and they had made that year already. He told me they'd made a um, hundred million dollars. <laughs> That's the kind of money we're talking. By about. the way, I can yeah, tell you rich. one of my favorite things with Segura is we talk about how much we get in theaters, and I, it's I, I love sharing those. Numbers. I love just it. within you know the to your crew, friends. Like, I'm not gonna say it on here, to, but yeah, just someone. I, to, I love like, sharing those numbers. Like me and me and like I got a check yesterday. I, Sent a picture. And I sent to Le- to Leah. We talked shit back and forth. You know, just yeah. being like, "Oh, thanks, life," or you know, just messing around. And then hope someone sent a check to Leah or someone. You know, or when we talked to Rogan, just like, "Oh my god!" It's it's you you celebrate different levels. It's like of money. good for you, man. Yeah, I, it's like that's so fucking cool. Some 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 money is. I yeah. I was in uh, Nashville. It's Ari's just got back from China or from Asia, so he's not. He's not all. He's not. He's really not celebrating the entertainment business at all. He just wants to be back. And we're doing a festival, so he's like jaded by it. And I'd done a one nighter the night before in Alabama, and I had my check, and it was it was a big for a one nighter. And and uh, you could do the math, but it was a big for a one nighter. And I just uh, dropped it in Ari's lap, and I go, "This is what you've been missing out on, buddy." And he <laughs> goes, "Oh, this is interesting," and just rips it up. <laughs> <laughs> Ari, by the way, he could give a fuck about money. He could give two shits. I, you he know what? I don't. I think I met maybe Ari. One, I don't know Ari that well at all. Really? Matter of fact, for the longest time, I didn't think he liked me. No, Still don't. I don't know him guy. at all. Such a good guy. He needs thirty five thousand dollars a year to live. That's right. That's what he needs. Oh, by the way, lent Bobby Lee. I think forty thousand dollars. <laughs> Lent it to him. No, I, I, we just we, we hang on the same crew, but yeah. we've never actually. I don't think met. Face he's face the him. best. He's v- br- to a fault, brutally honest. Like he ah, got, I like that. Yeah, well, <laughs> yeah. It can, it, it it depends. Can, it, it can rub you the wrong way every it now de- and then. You know, it, it depends how well of friends you are. Yeah. yeah, like he'll say stuff to me where like the only person I've ever met that's that like almost autistically brutally honest. Rogan. No, uh, no, no. Rogan's got Rogan will will skirt issues. If it's important, he'll be really honest with yeah. you. Yeah. But uh, is Daniel Tosh? Tosh mm. will say things to you where you it like, catches bro. you off guard, and you're like, Damn, dude, man. I've seen him do that to very famous people. Yeah. Where he goes, oh no, I can never have lunch with you. I I, uh, I don't like Tosh. you. Yeah. Like like as in beast. So, well, we'll just we should talk. He goes, no, I talked to you about the for about four minutes three years ago. That was entirely too long. Yeah. I swear to God, in front of a it, this is to a famous. Person mm-hmm. is he still doing a lot of stand up? I was like, oh, yeah, no. he comes by the store every now and then. I haven't seen him. He just bumped me the other day. He's a <laughs> beast. Then, he's a he's I I love him. I I uh, yeah I, I I love Daniel. We're Sir and I are planning a surprise party for him at his house. Oh, cool! So we're gonna get everyone. You guys are more than welcome to come. I like, and him, we're man. all just gonna get a party bus and then show up at his house when it's done renovated on a Sunday early. Knock on the door and go surprise, and then just bum Boom. rush it. Bring in some grills. Yeah, whether he's done already. And we're going to film it. And we're going to film it. And then we'll give it to Tosh.0 so they can air it. So you're pretty close to Daniel. No. No. No, but he's I, that's, why, that's why it's going to be way, great. He's, he's, he's going to know it now. About now. He, he knows about it. We talked about it. He's, it's it's coming. It's a fucking storm. You're not it's stopping it's it. out at sea. <laughs> Listen, the one. Oh, thing. you don't know when the barge is going to. You don't know when the barge is going to shore up. Oh yeah, but it's out there. All right. And when it does come, he's you listen to Bree Williams. No, <laughs> I mean I know so, I've known him for 13 years, and I but I don't talk to him. I don't call him on the phone or anything. And I told he's I'm, the guy I had like when I saw him. You know what got him to the dance, the stand up that got yeah. him to the dance. I haven't seen him, you know, in a while, but to me, like that shit was so good. Oh, and yeah. I've been doing stand up for a long time. 
and I do just fine. And I, I was like, well, that's the funniest shit I've ever seen. You know, I mean, it was, it was that good. He's, he, I, I really, I, re, I respect his comedy beyond, but I, he's a very sweet guy. I don't know if everyone gets that from him, but that's what I get. So I always have, I can always shorthand with him very quickly. And I, I really like him, but, uh, everyone that, I know that knows him well is like he was not going to be happy about this. I was that's like, funny. yeah, I know. <laughs> that's what's going to make it brilliant is me and Bill Burr and Rogan with all our families waiting outside, going, "You think he's going to open the door?" <laughs> oh my god, <laughs> it could be so awkward. Segura, oh <laughs> he'll get you can bully him into it. Dude, There's enough celebrity he's out gonna, of the store. He's going to open celebrity the door. The door. He like, he's, got, he's got to. Who's, who just sits in their living room and goes, "No." Nah. No, 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 that'd no. Be, that's gonna be hilarious if you don't answer the door and you see him going, Mm-mm, ain't happening. Yeah, ain't no. happening. You guys just, ain't coming in. And then calling him, hey man. <laughs> he's got that great house in Point Dune or something, right? Yeah, he's got like a, house. and he's just renovating it, is what someone said to me. One of his confidants is like, I wouldn't do it right now because he's renovating. That's why he's on tour. So wait until it's done. And I went, done. I think what we're gonna do. Yeah. We're gonna fuck that place up. Yeah. <laughs> what else you got, Jin? All right. The next one rides on that a little bit. So. During the attacks, there's two homeless, two homeless men that helped some of the people that were hurt by the the damage there, like kids with nails in their, you know, mm. everywhere on their uh, bodies. So these two homeless people ran towards the the people that were injured and helped them out. So they're getting a lot of attention on social media. These motherfuckers, these motherfuckers who are targeting children. You, f- yeah. It's a positive story about this. This is a positive movie. story. I don't care. So two of these guys, they've been already given. Like just through social media, people made these like GoFundMe pages and and everything else to give them upwards of forty to fifty thousand dollars each. And then someone from West Ham, do you know the soccer team West yeah. Ham? Yeah. Co owner yeah. is offering to give them like free rent for six months or something like that. That's mm. cool to to get them back on their feet. Yeah, like, okay. I mean, he might be a drug addict. I, that he's gonna blow through that. I was gonna floor. say, that, these, this sorry. never ends uh, well. By I, the way, I'm so no. sorry. That's the first thing I thought of. Is I, I literally was like, I he's gonna die. I go, he's I go, OD. I go, you get that guy forty, fifty thousand dollars. I have a feeling that he might have something. He may have, look. It might be mental illness, which is one thing, but yeah. it could also be that. He no, likes you're, you're ju- no, I'm, well, mental illness be... doesn't give you that jaw crooked like that. It's, there's there's something going on there. Yeah, that, that it looks is like not, he's that's not a great in the picture. picture of no, him. That know, is a tweaking. Yeah. I got some ideas about the government, <laughs> but yeah. like you know that the the thing that sucks is is uh, is you know ultimately he's gonna go like. I told you this would work out. Yep. <laughs> I mean, four, forty grand is not is not a lot of times what a guy like that. It needs right. Oh no! So 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 my so we we used to so a job would be cool. Jimmy Bird. No, he looks like he's gonna come up with conspiracy theories, do a yeah. fucking jagillion lines of blow, and probably die. Something's going on. Yeah. My uh, so though there was a guy who used to sell sodas. He was a, essentially a homeless guy, but he would sell. He'd have a big in, in down at Central Park. Everybody mm-hmm. would be playing softball, and he was a great guy, sweetheart of a guy. And he would walk around, and he had sodas and beers in a big. Sort of plastic bag with ice. Yeah. And you'd buy and in the summertime, you buy it and, his, and he was great. And let's just say his name was Chuck. And Chuck was just always a fixture and a great guy. Hey, man, how you doing? How's your day, man? Good, good. Hey, yeah. You, yeah, you want this? Yeah. We're like, man, well, he's such a good guy, man. You want good things to happen for that guy. He'd show <laughs> up with that fucking bag and you'd be thirsty and he'd always have beer, always have soda. And sometimes he'd have ice cream and he's just great. And he, and he had energy and he was this skinny guy yeah. and he, had, he was just poor. And we're like, what the fuck is going on with him? Anyway. He, uh, so you, you again, again, a guy who was always there, a fixture, uh, and you wanted good things for him. Well, Chuck won the lottery. Oh, Chuck won the Chuck lottery. Won the lottery? Chuck won the lottery. Like the oh. legit lottery? Chuck won the couple legit mil? lottery. No, Chuck won uh, the lottery, hundred. but a couple hundo. Yeah. A couple hundo. hundred thousand, yeah. two hundred thousand dollars. Oh, yeah. shit. And, uh, Chuck Put showed it in up. His veins. Chuck disappeared. And then Chuck showed up about, uh, <laughs> about three weeks later, uh, literally literally almost naked and just so dirty and just just fucking and he's fucking no drinks anymore yeah he yeah yeah oh. he, he has been shooting some shit in his veins for like a little he knocked my veins he a lot of went straight to his veins and Chuck's uh, all out of sunny yeah that was saying. the end of that in fact they never really saw him again that was the lottery was essentially what you, killed man. him he, I'd assume he that's was, what's going to happen. These yeah, days. what was keeping him sober was the fact that he needed money just to eat, 
what what he didn't need was two hundred thousand dollars. <laughs> a windfall so of cash. Fucking, yeah. yeah, so he can go fucking crazy, which is what he did. You mean and he didn't invest up, in his four hundred one k? I believe he ended up dead. I think I would be really good if I won the lottery. Yeah. Yep. Yep. I probably well, no one would ever see me again. So so how much money would you need to never be seen again? Though are you talking about oh. fuck you money? You talking about yeah, fuck you yeah, money? Well, is that twenty mil? Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I, twenty I, mil. Twenty mil would be good if you give After me. Taxes. But if you gave me one of those uh, hundred ninety million dollar lotteries, okay. I'm going to an island. I'm buying an island. I'm probably going to get a divorce because I get, know my wife doesn't want to live on an island. You we, get so bored on that island, Bert. Nope, not me. No, I not, disagree. Who are you going to party with? How would Jack and Daniels and those guys I'd fly people in? That's not a bad. Idea. I would tear through that cash. That, that's one of my ideas. But what would you do? I, I'd own a bar I'd, uh, down in St. Vincent. I think I'd buy this bar called Foxy's. Like the guy who owns uh, Virgin. Yeah, I buy. No, I buy. I move onto an island. I'd buy a big portion, start buying up real estate. But I'd own a beach bar and call it Burt's Beach Bar. And I'd I'd play, I'd have guitars. I'd fly, I'd fly in like Eddie Vedder. I'd fly in big musicians, pay them through the nose, Rock and I and just have like my friends down and people that can come in and afford to buy my hundred dollar drinks that I sell because it's gonna be. <laughs> hey, and bro, just, you charging a hundo? Yeah, I'm just you have all the money. Weed out the riffraff. It's like it's the old theory of uh, of wow, Disneyland. So you have you have you have only the rich. I no, I just the people. Oh no, if you guys came down as free drinks right but, but if you're a stranger and you want to hang out Hundo. you got you're watching eddie vetter he's playing acoustic on a ukulele you That's gotta pay some money point. yeah I'm, i gotta afford eddie vetter i'm not gonna go broke now here. after now after three months though it's gonna get a little I kinda old i like this story I, I dude i've thought about this a lot now what about girls you'd have a lot of, lot, lot of my loose. wife doesn't my wife has already said that that's not her plan so I'd be like, cool. Divorce. Yep. I'm going to set you up in the mountains. Here's yep. 20 mil. It, you, not divorced. We're going to stay together. It's going to be a very open at this point. Very sure. open relationship. It's very hard to talk about. Well, I'm rich now. Yeah. With yeah, $230 million, it's very difficult to get tell me that we need to stay together. It was yeah. 190 Now it's 230 Okay. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, 230 You just gave yourself a $40 million bump. All right. I mean, you heard the way she talks to me. Yeah. You yeah. talk to me like that? Yeah. About yeah. We definitely not go an open not, relationship. Not when you got over $200 million in the bank. No. So so now you're you're hanging you're you got your friends you got Burt's Bar I love Burt's Bar that oh, sounds fantastic cool are, you, are you flying in Russian girls what, what's going on I'm just curious uh, probably Czech you know, girls I'd the, probably, a melting pot I, melting yeah pot. it would definitely be a melting pot it would be I wouldn't do the internet girls like the the you, Instagram stars and stuff see you, just maybe really? South America and Eastern you don't Europe want to let's do get the Instagram that I'd, I'd, famous I'd, I'd probably fly in a lot of like just like. Chicks I always wanted to have sex with in college. Oh, yeah. Like, a lot of girls, like... Uh, they're kind of married now, though, Bert. That's not fun. Well, you'd be shocked. They're also, they're also 50. If I said, hey, mm-hmm. yeah, you got a bunch of your friends. Come down to the island. See what happens. Yeah. They, then they see if a taste of that. If it's the girls from your college, though, and they show up like, I'm a mom now, Bert. I know. That's what I'm into. I like that older, <laughs> a little bit of flaw, the rental car that's got some bruises on it. Yeah, I got yeah. you. I got yeah. you. Yeah. Right? I'm with you on that. I'm I with you on that. That was, one, island. that was one scenario I had. The other scenario is I just do... I just set up comedy touring the way I want to do it. Well, wait, in, no in Burt's Bar, do you have Brendan in like a cage? And it's like, if you girls want to get pregnant, this guy's don't let it out. You know what I mean? Do you want yeah. a baby that looks like him? And he's like, he's <laughs> oh, standing dude, with a big I'm smile. I'm doing weird shit. Like, you understand, this bar is going to be next level. Okay? So so, uh, so, so I, I hit up uh, John, John Jones, right? Yeah. Okay. And I say, dude, I got a proposition for you. <laughs> okay? Um, I'm putting uh, $250,000 on your back in a backpack. I'm going to send in six guys. If they can get it off your backpack, they keep the money. But if you keep the money, I'm tripling it for you. You know what this sounds like? This Damn. sounds like Burt's Dr. Monroe's Island. Yeah. And then, but and people then, are fucked. I and love then, that and then, idea. And then I bring, I bring in a real cage. I bring in everyone. And then I got, and then John Jones there, right? And then yeah. other fighters come in. The Diaz brothers are in there. They're getting high. Everyone's having a good time. Yep. And then they're watching all this. And then everyone's like, dude, it was the most amazing time of my life. And all, I just had like two drinks for 200 bucks. It was fucking <laughs> insane. Yeah, so- and then all my friends are like, dude, I, Bert is like a philanthropist. Yeah. Like he's, we, he flew us in on a private jet. He's the Elon Musk of party. I was going to say, yeah. you're, we saw the Diaz brothers fight baboons. Uh-huh. Yeah. Night. And baboons. Then, and you're tearing yeah. through this money. <laughs> it's just Diaz brothers are baboons. Yeah, both Diaz Muzzles, brothers, one baboon. They beat the fuck of that baboon. Man. <laughs> I felt bad for him. Dude, and then John Jones came flying in high off his ass full of coke dude. with a whole fucking knapsack full of cash. Yeah. And then six guys were dead behind them, man. What, the and then we all that, fucked all these no one, weird older like girls from Florida State with kids. It was a real shit show. And actually, I spent two grand on like four drinks, man. It was a nightmare. People are you like, know what? Now I think of it. 
It's a nightmare. <laughs> Dude. And then the baboon freaked the fuck out and started yeah. killing started people. Started throwing its shit everywhere. <laughs> and then his friends and came. Bert gave a guy's a hundred grand to kill a baboon. And dude, and then but the, Cameron Haynes came in with his bow and arrow, <laughs> shot that fucker right through the heart. No one could say anything to me. They're like, no, seriously, I saw a cheetah fight a wolf. And they're like, Bert's having cage fights with animals. They're like, no one can say it. it's his island, man. <laughs> it's his island. He's doing the fuck he wants. Hey, Jap, the Japanese have bug fights. Have you seen that shit? No. Oh, I think I have. I think yeah. I definitely have. Yeah, they do like the wasp. Or yeah, stuff. I've that seen wasp, that. that wasp like beats everybody. You know, you know what beats everybody? That fucking beetle. That's it's, fucking it's, it's beetle. because of its exterior. Yeah, yeah you can't. You can't if, you, if you want to lose money in an island, do that insect that bug, fight. Yeah. yeah. We're, even four, where four it. people can see it. You, hey, hey, bit killer. I know. I'm even talking about <laughs> it. We're having a great down. time. Hey, you're, you've seen the beetle fight that ant in real life? Like, I just realized. Even bringing it up brought it down. <laughs> Animal Seriously, fights. it was a twenty-five thousand dollar buy-in to see if I could knock this guy out, <laughs> and no one did it. He was up all night. Guy has a steel chin, just up all oh, night. So I would, dude, if you gave me a show where I could do whatever the fuck I wanted, well, any idea that came to my mind, like I, I sometimes I would get those and I'd pitch them to the scripts people. I'd be like, uh, like one time we were all drinking and I was like, I think I could build a pool. And they're like, they're like Such what? And I go, I bet I could. Like, I bet I could Google it and Nightmare. pull it up on YouTube yeah. and just build a pool. I bet I could do that. And they're like, you definitely couldn't build a pool. No. And I was like, I was like, give me a show, give me a budget, I'll build my fucking pool. See, I like that idea. Bert does this, or Bert thinks he can do this. Dude, I literally, there are times where I go, I could, like, I could definitely do that. I could build a roller coaster in my backyard. <laughs> Like, yeah, I trust it. Yeah, I trust it. You get what you get an engineering degree. I'm not. I'm just really drunk. That's the build. You too. Have you seen that? Uh, I forget where they're at. They're at some huge concert. You know when they line up all the porter potties and people run on top of them. Yeah. Some guy's like, oh, I can clear that, and he's hammered in college, and he's telling his buddy, he's like, I can easily. I ran track in high school. I can run over the top of that and then jump over and clear that. Like, let's see it. And he's all, watch this. He's all, kush, yeah, whack, like. <laughs> Knocked out. I'd love to see Bert try shit like that. <laughs> Do you know who the, you That's know who the, the show, man? You know who the oh worst one to pitch these ideas oh to God. is? Rogan. Like, cause That's stupid. Why I'll, would you do that? Yeah. Why the fuck would you Why I, would you want to do that? I told him one time, I think I was drinking, and I go, I think me and Tom Segura could beat Cameron Hayes in a race. And he was like, <laughs> I'm sorry, what? What? I was like, tag team. Like, you know, we run a marathon, and I'll run a mile, Tom will run a mile. Off. Yeah, and we got it. We got it. Cam's studiedly yeah, going. Cam's just going. And he's like, Rogan's like, you can't do that. You definitely can't do that. He's a, he's a monster. He's a beast. Hey, that won't happen. You need to be realistic in these ideas. Hey, entertain, entertain me for a second, <laughs> no, though. He shot I you get right that. It's not good. Yeah. He'll shut you right to fuck that. No, no, that's not going to happen. That. No, no, no. That's no. not going to happen. I was joking around with, we were with Glover Teixeira, and he, I took a picture with him, and then, because uh, he likes the hangover, whatever the fuck it was. I was like, oh, that's really cool. And I, he's talking to Rogan, and I go, now, do you think I could take him? Joking around. I go, could I? Because he's like, and Joe, without you, he goes, no, no, stop, stop. I'm like, <laughs> Hey, I was going with I was going I'm somewhere with, with a I'm with pit. Joe with that, I'm though. I'm going there somewhere with you with everyone. I'm with Joe. Oh, I was and going with a bit. you've known him for 25 years. It doesn't matter. I'm, I'm going sure to, he's like, stop. I, I was making a bit. I was about to do a bit, but she killed it. I'm like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. And then you're just like. Oh, because I was being serious. Uh, all right. Like, I, I do, like, it's good to have Rogan in your life because he keeps it real. But, like, I love when you say, like, like uh, the one that stuck in my head, I was like. I said to someone, I was like, I bet I could become a black belt in jujitsu in five years. And they were like, where did you get this information? I was like, I don't know. I heard on a podcast that if you really focus, you could do it in five years. And they're like, no. No. And it was no. Joey. It was Joey. Yes. Yeah, he was like, no, buddy. No, no you can't. Yeah, no. He's like, I've been doing it for years. Yeah. I'm, a, I'm a fucking blue belt. I think, and I, I don't think, even earn that one. I think BJ Penn did it. There are a couple of guys. Oh, the BJ Penn? Yeah. Yeah. So it's no yeah. So yeah. It's, so it's, it's The no exception. Yeah. The exception. Yeah. BJ yeah. Penn did it. Yeah. BJ Penn did it. I guess. Eddie Bravo did it in five and a half. Oh, so you're saying that. Oh, so so. All right. Well, now they did it. I think I can do this. Yeah, because you have to same structure as bj penn oh yes. but I, it's that mickey mantle gene in my head where i go i could fucking do that it's true like where you go Fearless. where you just think big thoughts and you're like i bet i could do that <laughs> yeah my buddy my buddy's out there who's never fought but he'll play baseball but he's like um he, he believes that he could take anybody like you know those guys like i mean on a given day if i were to get oh. it at his eyes or his throat you know there's always that thing dude dude like, that is that is uh i love the energy for those guys Mm. Yeah, I, I definitely have. He's never that. been hit in the face. I, I, I won't even entertain that conversation. What if someone said that? 
Oh, that they could but it's beat not up like, anybody. But he, it's not like oh, he's no. going to say anything. He's going to say, well, depending. You're like, well, no. It's amazing how that really shows up in real life, though. Like, in real life, today, we're riding our bikes to school, and a guy flies by my daughter and then throws his hands up in her air at her. And I just start going, hey, fuck you, buddy. And I fucking pedal up to him because he's in a car. I'm on a bike. I'm on a oh, beach word. cruiser. But in... I really took the challenge. I was like, I, I can beat up anybody. I don't know who's in that car. I yeah. can beat up anybody. Yeah. I can beat up anybody right now. And I, and I, and I, by the way, I was barefoot and I, I just had a cup of coffee in my hand and my cell phone in my middle pocket of my hoodie. I was like, I'm not you prepared. You went to Papa Bear mode though. Yeah. Where you don't really think about yeah, it. You yeah. Mad. That's what it is. That's what it is. But there's a lot of people that, that go like, I could beat up anybody in a car. And then you're like, no, no, nah, it's a bad idea. It's, I used to be more like that when I was young. Now I'm scared because I'm 50. And I see a young dude who's getting like cut me off or mad, and I'm like, guy who's young and strong, and he probably trains, and he's probably like fucking doing jujitsu all the time, and I don't want to fight that guy at all. I read their bumper stickers. I can tell by their bumper yeah, stickers bumpers. if I can take them. Ugh. I'm like, Gore, 97. I'm like, ah, I can take this guy. <laughs> Fuck <Yeah>. Gore. <laughs> Gore. Gore. <laughs> you got anything else, Jim? Is that it? Um, Tom Cruise. Ooh. After 31 years, Top Gun is coming back with Top yes. Gun 2. Now, is he going to be in this? He's going to be in it. And I heard that Val Kilmer was on wow. Reddit, and he said he's on board too. But they're who knows not if that's be true. Using him. Nah, they're barely yeah. gonna be in there. But have you seen Val Kilmer lately? Yeah, it's not, you don't yeah, want to yeah. see that guy. He's, he's one of my canaries on the in the mine. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's, got, he's got throat cancer. Is yeah, and but Michael Douglas called him out on it in public. Do you, do you remember no. that? What if, happened? He was giving a speech at somewhere, and he was drooling, and he was just kept sopping up his drool. Val Kilmer. By the way, no disrespect to Val if you're listening. Because I think he's genius. Yeah, like, no, shout he's, out to Batman. He's, he's like, and then Michael oh. Douglas comes, comes out and he goes, he has cancer. He needs to be checked because Michael oh, Douglas wow. had throat cancer. That's right. But he said he got it from his girl, right? From HPV. Yeah. And so Val Kim was like, fuck you. I don't have throat cancer. I've been tested. And then he's like, I got throat cancer. Damn. Really? So Because yeah. he, he was drooling and stuff? He was drooling. It's a really aggressive, like he's trying to give a speech and his whole oh. thing's swollen and he's just dripping oh, his drool up. Fuck, really man. kind of heartbreaking. But the point is... Uh, no one's putting him in top. He's not. I mean, you have, there's a certain weight limit for a plane. You just can't <laughs> no, throw them in, and then you ain't fitting as thick, thicker than a Snickers ass into this fucking yeah. F sixteen. Yeah, they're not yeah. made for those thick dudes. Wait, what's the plot of the movie? I know the plot. I can't say. Oh, oh, oh you that? know it for no. You don't read it on no. On, oh, okay, no, I know. Yeah, I know Miles Teller's in it too. Oh, that's gonna be pretty badass. I like Miles Teller. Yeah, he's amazing. I like those guys that creep up on you, and you're like, "Oh, this dude, he's, he's worth it." He's killing it. Yeah, he's about to blow. He, I mean, he's already killing it, but he's about to, you know, get up to that upper echelon of acting. Yeah, yeah, he's a monster. Shout out to Tom Cruise. Yeah, for Crusher, thanks for joining us, buddy. Dude, this, I'm telling you, when I said thanks this, and I'm not, that, I'm not uh, joking around. I, as soon as I got that call, I knew what that was. It's a big production. This is more important to me than that, and, and I'm not fucking around. I love what you guys are doing, and I've and I've wanted for a very long time because I, I get it all the time on Twitter. Like, when are you going to be on Fighter Kid? Yeah. When are you going to be on Fighter Kid? And I always wanted. I'm not that guy that ever goes, "Hey man, can I come on your podcast?" Like, I'm not that dude. And when you guys hit me up, I was like, so fucking pumped. Dude, so you're pumped. always welcome, man. Yeah, I'm we so glad you're. I, when we were talking in the comedy store, and I was like, "Dude, when are you coming back on the podcast?" Y'all never been. I'm like, "What the fuck? Yeah. Crazy. You've never because I did yours." And then I want I've always wanted I've hit you up a couple anytime. times on Twitter. I'd love to have you on my podcast. I, didn't, I never t- got it. I didn't get it on Twitter. I, I would always responded. reply when people were like, "When are you getting Brian Callahan?" I'd be like, "I'd love to have him on." But I'll I also come on anytime you want. I didn't. I would, I I'm didn't not realize that, that. I'm not that guy that I, I like. I don't ask for stuff, but I love when people ask to be on my podcast because I'm like, "Fuck yeah!" Just, oh, just give me a yeah. date and it I'll come helps on. you. Give oh yeah, it makes yeah. it like, "Oh thank God!" Like I love when you're like, "Yeah, I'd love to come." I'm like, "Oh hell yeah, we got a guest." Yeah, give me a date. I'll come on. This was a blast. His is sweet too. He has like this man cave. He's a great fucking. And I just got. I'm taking my shit to the next level. I came in, cameras, and, yeah, I, dude. Well, I got cameras, but I'm I got my lighting package. I got I'm gonna get mic arms so that the audio is better. We got maybe some air boosters, some cloud boosters. You talk to our boy. Yeah, oh, we just up. we just unplugged your whole setup and plugged it into my setup. Oh, dude, to you're talking about the, the it, mon- dude, it was you're talking the about the monster over here. It's yeah. the best. It was yeah. the best. monster. Yeah, the monster. Yeah, and so uh, so I'll, I would love to have you back on. I'd love to get you on. Dude, and it. and I appreciate you guys for having me, dude. Thank oh, you, brother. It. Awesome. I'm gonna go run to this shoot. You're a good man. Have fun at this shoot. Thank you, guys. You're the best. Thank you. You're the best one. Oh, I'm on the road. Uh, I'm in Hawaii, May 31st. San Francisco at Cobbs, June 9th and 10th. Love Cobbs. Sacramento's sold out. And then Kansas City, Orlando, you can find me everywhere. Legion of Skanks Festival. 
I'm on the road hardcore. And then on uh, Instagram and Twitter where you announce all this too. Uh, yeah, yeah. Just go to burtburtburt.com with an E and you can find all my Instagram, all my Twitter. I'm, I'm, I've increased my Twitter by a lot of people just by focusing and putting out videos that can't like that, like putting some attention into them. So yeah, check me out there. I love it. Boom. Hey, I'll check me out. I'm going to be in uh, June 8th, 9th, and 10th just at an Irvine improv. Come see me. Boom. Love Irvine. By the way, can I only tell you all I just did right there was figured out the size of your check, and I was like, God damn it, that's got to be nice. It's going to be some fun. June 8th, 9th, and 10th. Come see me. And then I will be in uh, Australia tour, Brisbane, Sydney's both sold out, Brisbane, Auckland, and... Melbourne, I think there's less than 20 Lover. tickets left in those. <laughs> all the- hashtag all theaters. Uh, hashtag those, all all theaters. those are almost sold out. And then June 22nd, Gotham Comedy Club in New York. And July 28th, Long Beach Laugh Factory. Get everything you need for Brian and myself. TFATK.com. This is the Fire Kid with the Machine. We're out.